The only problem with giving up the first pick is you no longer have the first pick. It's like the last bite of a sandwich. I would, if I were a GM, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't even use it. I wouldn't even use the first pick. What if I would you, just hold it? What if forever? You, what if you traded back to the first pick? Yeah, just be like Panthers. Maybe. How about we give you your picks back, but we keep DJ Moore? Yeah. On today's part of my take, we have our brackets. The brackets are out. March Madness is finally here. My bracket's busted. Oh, no. There goes my bracket. It's the uh, gif of the trash can going down a flooded street. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, hey, gonna... Big Cat, live look at my bracket. It's a dumpster fire. Oh, shit. And we also have Whitey in the building. Uh, we have Mark Titus on to break down the brackets. We're going to talk about the eve of NFL free agency. The Bears have made a big trade on Friday afternoon. Talk about that. Aaron Rodgers is still a piece of shit. Who's back of the week? And guess what? A bonus NIT bracket reveal at the end of the show before we do the lottery balls. See if Nova gets in. And it's all brought to you by our friends at Pup Peroni. Pup Peroni. And guess what? PFT, I know that you're thinking maybe it's time you're back in the dog market. Going to get a yard in Chicago. Going to get a dog. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you. I want your dog to be a pepperoni dog. Why is that? I want him to be a pepperoni dog because pepperoni or her or her has delicious treats. They're irresistible. The smell of them, dogs smell them, and they're like, "Oh my god, I need to be a pepperoni dog." Billy's been having uh, Whitey eat some pepperoni. Guess how good pepperoni is? How good is it? Billy walked by me. He farted. And it was funny. I mean, sorry, Whitey did. I uh -huh. thought it was Billy, but it was Whitey. It sounded like a human fart. I was like, was that Whitey? And Billy's like, man, he just loves pepperoni. That's how good it is. Every dog loves pepperoni. It is the treat and the food that every dog goes for. So, PFT, mm -hmm. can I talk you into being a, a, a pepperoni guy? I don't know. I was thinking maybe my, my dog would be vegan. I'm not sure. Do okay, all right. Well, I, well, maybe we'll have some more time to talk to you into it. Either way, go to pepperoni dot com to find a bag near you that's p-u-p-p-e-r-o-n-i dot com to find a bag near you and send us a pic of you and your dog filling out your bracket for a chance to win some pmt merch tweet us at part of my take and at pepperoni i i stella's a pepperoni dog i'm just gonna say it right now stella's a pepperoni dog because pepperoni has the best treats out there let's treat our dogs how they should be treated our best friends BFT, I still got some work to do with him, but Whitey's a, a pepperoni dog. Stella's a pepperoni dog. You can be a pepperoni dog owner. Go to pepperoni.com to find a bag near you. Send us a pic of your dog filling out your bracket for a chance to win some PMT merch and tweet us at Pardon My Take and Pepperoni. At Pardon My Take and at Pepperoni. I just booped Whitey like seven times during the ad read. He's happy. I think next time we talk about pepperoni, I'm going to go for the world record. Yes, he is happy dog. Pepperoni makes happy dogs. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take. Today is Monday, March 13th. And we have our brackets. This is Let's go. This is Marsh. Let's go. Hear that? Hear that, folks? Yeah, you even got Hank with a pen in his hand. You never see that. Mm -hmm. That's like Loch Ness Monster. This is the most reading that I do in oh a calendar year. God. Like Non-internet reading is, I think, 90% of the words that I read over the course of the year when it comes to paper and ink are probably in the three days before March Madness starts mm -hmm. when I just look at all these different brackets. I'm probably going to print out seven or eight different brackets. Just look at them. I just love looking at a bracket. And you have to have Guys to only one. want one thing, and it's disgusting it's to look at brackets. It's a bracket. It's a bracket. I'm so excited for March Madness. We have Mark Titus on the show. We're going to break down the bracket, talk all the storylines, get excited. Um, before we do that, though, because we can save... I, I want to talk about the bracket with March, Mark, Mark Titus. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about anything else. I do want to say Rutgers got screwed. Let's just throw that Rutgers out Rutgers got fucked. Rutgers got fucked. I, I, one of my favorite parts of uh, when they do the bracket reveal and you have the last four out and one team always gets fucked. Uh, that team gets maybe like three minutes of everyone feeling bad for them. Yeah. And then... You're like, oh shit! I have a bracket in my hand. Yeah, don't care. I don't, don't give care a anymore. fuck. Rutgers, who? Uh, like, who? Who the fuck cares? I don't. Hey, I, uh, Rutgers? Did they even play basketball this year? I have a bracket. Texas A&M got fucked too with their seating. Yeah, but 
that's another thing where I, I I see that they come out and they get a seven seed, but then I see that we could get a juicy second round matchup between mm-hmm. Texas A and M and Texas, and I'm like, good. I'm glad A and M got screwed just so that I can potentially look ahead to that matchup. Yes, yes. So um, I also got duped. I want to just hand up. I got duped. Um, I did not expect Wisconsin to make the bracket. I actually am happy they're not because their season's been torturous. I I was at maybe. If you ask me honestly, this morning it was like 1% chance. 1% like three or four teams say, hey, we're not playing, so we need to find some more teams to get in the 68-team field. Mm -hmm. Right before the bracket was revealed, uh, my friends, my best friends from from college, we have a group text. One of them dropped a CBS sports link. I thought it was going to be a big black cock. It wasn't. I thought we were going to go back to COVID times. It was instead an article that said NCAA Tournament 2023 Wisconsin Badgers. It's all positive vibes now for the Badgers after they somehow snuck into the field of 68 despite being one of the nation's lowest scoring teams. That was an insult sentence right there, but that's fine. Either way, I saw it and I was like, oh, script leaked. We're in. Yep. So in a cruel twist of fate, I have not let this team hurt me whatsoever all year. And then I had this dropped into my lap right before the bracket reveal. Got my weird hopes up. And then they hurt me. In the last final second, they're like, wait, hold on. Let's get him one last time. You know what it is. It's like when they write an obituary ahead of time. So they're ready to drop it. This is like uh, Jimmy Carter dead Mm -hmm. at the age of 98. And they accidentally publish it like two days before he gets in. So I I feel like... um, I feel like just acknowledging that you were a bubble team is kind of a win. Yeah, but it just it it really was so mean that they did that to me at the last possible second because I had no expectations. I could not emotionally get hurt, and then it was one last. Oh, maybe they're alive. No, they're actually dead. yeah, they're dead. They're yeah. deader than dead. Yeah. So, so there's that. There's uh, there's UNC preemptively declaring that they're not going to participate in the NIT, Cowards. which is a bullshit Cowards. thing that they're doing. And one it's, more spot for Nova. It's disgusting that JM, that that uh, UNC is bowing out. Maybe JMU gets in instead of UNC. We'll find out at the end but of the show. People forget that UNC, the NIT used to be the national championship tournament. That's true. It's very disrespectful what you're doing. They are the first team to go from preseason uh, number one mm-hmm. to not making the NCAA tournament since the field was expanded in 1985. They're also the first team to go to, from a Final Four straight to Cowardville. They're cowards. They are cowards. This is it's disgusting. It's a slap in the face to all of college basketball. Bitch made. I the really sport we love and, so very deeply. And we were robbed of Armando Baycott uh, rolling his ankle three or four more times. That's also that's, true. That's bullshit. I wanted to see it. I wanted to be like, oh no, is he really injured this time? No, he's back in the game. So, so my big takeaway from this, from looking at how the how the bracket could play out. And Big Kid, I think you're on the same page as I am. I think this is Duke's year. Yeah, I think we got to go. I think we got to go heavy on Duke. Yeah, because how awesome would that be if Duke won the national championship the year after Coach K left? Coach K was it, holding the boys back. It would be, it would be so awesome for so many reasons, but it would also change all of history because I will go back and I will comb through every year where Duke underperform because I would think the John Shire winning the ACC tournament on Saturday night, they've kind of put it together here. They've overperformed what they look like at the beginning of the season. You could say that, that coach K should have had 10 national championships. He's actually a colossal disappointment failure. I would overall, say overall uh, as a human Hank, are you going to be back? Are you back into the Duke bandwagon? You're back. Yeah, kind of. Okay, so you don't, don't even make want it, him to win. Listen to you, Hank. You don't want Duke to win. If they don't make it a Sweet Sixteen, you get a cat. No. Okay. All right. Well, I tried. I tried. I, tried. I took one Hail Mary. Uh, it, but it, do you think if they made if they made the national championship, you think that Coach K would try to uh, retroactively claim all these wins mm-hmm. for him, like mm-hmm. the opposite of a Pete Gaudet situation? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. They're his. They're his guys. He they're recruited guys. these guys. Yeah. Yeah. No. He would. He'd be like, actually, I've been involved with this team since day one. Yep. Uh, but. We will do all the bracket talk with Titus. We got to break through everything. We'll do every region. We'll talk about our picks. We'll see storylines. Everything. We got a lot of bracket talk to get to. Also, the Bears are back. So on Friday, fleeced. They fleeced. Somebody got fleeced. I don't know who asked me in three years, but somebody got fleeced. Fleeced. The Bears uh, traded the number one pick. We all expected it. I, I want to say that the timing. Uh, it feels like we kind of pushed Ryan Poles to do it. He actually texted me after and was like, thanks, man. Uh, we took all your... Well, he texted me before the trade. He said, does this look good to you? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just thumbs upped it. And then they did the trade. And he's like, you and PFT have great football minds. Thank you for uh, 
getting this, He's a smart this guy. deal done. He's a smart guy. Uh, they got the, the part that was kind of looked over when they announced this trade because it didn't seem like the massive haul of picks mm -hmm. that some people thought. But DJ Moore... <sighs> Getting DJ Moore, did you know, Big Cat? Oh that, yeah, that I know. This big, is wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me finish. Okay. Did you know that DJ Moore, his total yeah. career total for receiving yards yes. would make him the Bears' yes. all-time yes. leading receiver? Yes. yes. So congrats, you got the best you receiver also know that I think in the history. I'm, I'm saying it's a good thing. You got the all-time leading wide receiver in the history of the Bear, Bears organization. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure the top like seven or eight. Three of them are non-wide receivers. Yeah, they're tight ends. No, it's Matt Forte, Walter Payton, and Mike Ticker are definitely in there. Yeah. So that, yeah. Greg no. Olson's probably up there, too. No, he didn't play long enough. Okay. But, yeah, it's 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 bad. It's been bad. Offensive football's not great. But, yeah, so the, the haul exactly is Bears trade the one pick to the Panthers. Ooh, shout out the Panthers for, for throwing out a smoke screen today and being like, we're not – we might trade the one pick, which would be so hilarious if they did and got more than the Bears. That'd I don't be even very want funny. To think about that. Yeah, they the, they trade the one pick. The Bears get back the ninth pick, the sixty first pick, which is the second rounder this year, the twenty twenty four first pick, and the twenty twenty five second round pick, and DJ Moore. And I love the trade for many different reasons because we need draft capital. But the fact that they got DJ Moore, who if you're going to draft a wide receiver, you're basically saying, yeah, there could be a wide receiver in the first round this year that's better than DJ Moore, but it's a risk. You yeah. don't know. It's a 50 DJ Moore is pretty fucking good. He's really good. Now you have your wide receiver core. I think they still probably will draft someone or maybe free agency, but you got a, a pretty decent wide receiver core around Justin Fields, and you can focus the draft on offensive and defensive line. I love how assertive it was. Get it done right before free agency. Start moving forward, and... Jalen Carter might fall. I don't know. Imagine that. Imagine yeah. if the Bears actually got Jalen Carter, who they could have drafted with one. That would be that nice. That probably won't happen. That would be nice, though. Uh, the, the Panthers seem like they're – somebody leaked something because C.J. Stroud went from being, like, plus 600, plus 400 in some places to now he's, like, negative money Yeah, to be the number one overall pick. So somebody somewhere knows that the Panthers love C.J. Stroud. Tough break for all the Anthony Richardson fans out there, of which mm -hmm. there are many. But it There's could still, still happen. Time. It could definitely it could still, still happen. Hey, Hank, think Anything about it this happen. way. Anything Anthony happen. Richardson physically could wear a lot of the same uniforms that Cam Newton wore. Mm -hmm. They're basically the same player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you just – if I were the Panthers, I would look back on that Cam Newton draft and I'd say, I want somebody that's as close to Cam Newton as possible. Who better than Anthony Richardson? You should be like, hey, Anthony, will you do the Superman after touchdowns? Okay. Yeah, dab. Done. Anthony Richardson, Done. he could bring the dab back. Yeah, he could. But I, I am very – the Bears did something good. I'm very optimistic. Talking with everyone on Friday, I was like, everyone's enthusiastic. It feels good. The options are unlimited. They still have the number one uh, most cap space, which is crazy because that was the other part about DJ Moore. DJ Moore is signed for three years, $17 million a year. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like he, It's not just a, hey, we're going to throw. You needed weapons for Justin Fields to see what he is as a passer. I know that this all... The, this all hinges on Justin Fields' progression. That might be the scary part, but everything else is starting to align that if Justin Fields is who I think he is and who I hope he is, the Bears could be in a really good spot, and it's all crazy to me because it, it doesn't make sense for the Bears to actually be doing competent things as an organization. And I also just want to say shout-out Davis Mills. That motherfucker, I love him for life because none of this is possible. If he doesn't beat the Colts. And that's why I was that excited that day. Because when you have the first pick, you have all the ability to to make all the moves. That was a franchise alter, hopefully franchise altering touchdown pass and two-point conversion he made in Indianapolis that Sunday. Because if these picks start to align and they start to do well, this could be like, hey, the Bears have built something here. I'm excited. Now, the Bears might not be done trading, though. Yeah, they I said that they remember could, I told trade back. They said more. that they might they might trade back or, or they might up. they might trade up. Two for two know. second rounders. Yeah, th if this was draft day, they would not be done just no. yet. So there's uh yeah, there's a lot of stuff that could happen. It would be very funny though if the if the Panthers somehow figured out a way to get more don't, for the first round pick. I don't want and then they traded to some other team and that yeah. third team. Yeah. Like as teams get more and more desperate leading up to the draft, 
Or maybe it's a smoke screen. Maybe the Panthers are saying they leaked this stuff about CJ because they knew there was another team. That maybe, I mean, who is probably, who is the most dupable owner in the NFL? Mm. And I say this with love. Jim Irsay. It's probably Jim Irsay. If Jim Mark Irsay, Davis, number two. If Jim Irsay doesn't get uh, Lamar Jackson, it sounds like he's going to try to get Lamar. He might be one owner that's mm-hmm. in on Lamar. But if things don't work out for him, I could see Jim Irsay then being like, shit, you know what? We should get that pick. Colts yeah. traditionally have a, a rich history of drafting good quarterbacks with the first overall pick. That's true. And draft. He's very comfortable drafting first. That's true. I, I think the Panthers will use this pick. I think Frank Reich probably took this job being like, get the first pick for me because I don't want to do a replacement quarterback again. Yeah. He spent the last five years of his career just getting, you know, cast offs, not cast offs, but guys at the tail end of their career. And he's like, I need something new. I need a fresh start. The Panthers are going to have a fresh start. Uh, the Bears are going to have a fresh start. I'll say it. You know what? I'll be I'll be honorable. Win win all around. Good job, Panthers. Both teams I, won. I do think uh, from like because obviously this news happened. It happened on Friday during uh, conference tournament like madness. So I processed it, and then on Saturday I just started reading every article I could read about it, and it seemed like the there was a sticking point in the trade where the Panthers didn't want to give up DJ Moore and they wanted to give up a 2025 first. Because a lot of people were like, if you trade the first pick, you should get two additional firsts back. Mm -hmm. I would much rather have DJ Moore than the 2025 first. I would. I'd rather have the guy who's good, That's, so 20, who's, who's an established 20, NFL wide receiver. It's so far in the future that it might not even happen. Right. When I hear 2025, that's that's a future problem. We can figure that out at a later time. Um, and uh, it also just makes it so the Bears can attack the draft on the line. Like, they can go get the offense and defensive line, and they don't have to, to, to try to get a wide receiver right now. Like, they still – it's not finished. It's not – people were, were – were tweeting the wide receiver core of the Bears and being like, where does it rank? Everyone's like, last, dead last, all this shit. Like, that's hurtful. Still hurts my feelings. Just, this is good. This is a decisive move that Ryan Poles has now set him himself up to make more decisive moves. Yeah, it's it's actually perfect because in three years we can look back at every person that they drafted. And then it's going to take three years to finally determine mm-hmm. whether or not this was a good trade back. This is actually – it's so nice having the first overall pick if you're a general manager. It's the best. Because you, you trade back and then you get essentially like a job extension. Yeah. So you get a contract extension because you're like, well, you can't judge me until the last of those draft picks – two years, three years after we draft right. until they mature. Right. So essentially you've given yourself like a seven year window right. to prove yourself as a general manager. I trust in Ryan Poles. It's a weird feeling to be like, yeah, you know what? I think the Bears are doing the right thing. They're making the correct moves. The only the only problem with giving up the first pick is you no longer have the first pick. It's like the last bite of a sandwich. I would if I were a GM, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade I wouldn't even use it. I wouldn't even use the first pick. What if I you, would just hold it what if forever. You, what if you traded back to the first pick? Yeah. Just be like, Panthers, maybe, how about we give you your picks back, but we keep D.J. Moore? Yeah. I, I, done. Maybe I'll the Panthers are I'll experiencing regret right now. Yeah, there's definitely some buyer's remorse because the Panthers, come on, that was stupid. You guys got fleeced. But no, no, good trade. Well, the, the Bears, they definitely miss having the first-round pick because uh, Ryan Poles was probably talking to a lot of good friends on the phone for a while. Mm-hmm. He probably seemed like he was cool. Everyone was blowing him up. Yep. Now the phone stops ringing yep. once you stop having something That's that everybody okay. else wants. NFL GMs, are, NFL GMs are such fake friends. They don't keep in touch with the other GMs unless there's something they want from them. Yeah, no, no. Now we grind some tape. Now we grind some tape. So free agency starts Monday. Uh, by the time you're listening, it's already started. I think we'll have an Aaron Rodgers resolution by Monday. Are you starting to think about what I said on Friday? Oh, yeah. So it makes it makes more and more sense to me the more I think about it that Aaron would absolutely love to just rub in people's faces that he turned down this contract so you can't tell him anything for the rest of his life. Yeah, and and Mark Murphy, the president of the Packers, uh comments definitely furthered that along. So, uh first of all, shout out Mark Murphy because you would think well, actually, you wouldn't think this. This is very Wisconsin. I say this actually in an endearing way, not in a negative way. Uh, he didn't do a press conference. He actually was interviewed uh, a, in the middle of a Wisconsin high school girls basketball state tournament. That's when he was interviewed and talked about Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Perfect. I love that. Like, in a true, I truly do love that. So he said, uh, when asked about Rodgers, he said, uh, yeah, I mean, unless if things don't work out the way the Packers want them, yeah, we would – uh, bring him back. He is obviously a great player. And then he started talking about 
uh, his legacy and like we're going to retire his number mm -hmm. and we just want to do right by him, which means they he clearly wants to leave. But now he might retire. I don't know. You're right. Here was the exact quote that, that was like, huh, this feels like a done deal unless Aaron Rodgers retires. He said, we're fortunate to have back-to-back -back Hall of Fame quarterbacks. It kind of happens in our game. Very few players play for only one team. Brett had a great career here. Aaron had a great career. Regardless of what happens, Aaron will be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He'll be in our Hall of Fame. We will bring him back and retire his number. But this is just one of the things that you go through as a team. We want to try to achieve something that is good for both Aaron and us. Yeah. That so, doesn't feel like Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. It, it also seems like the Jets would have had a, a deal that was in place tentatively with the Packers. And then the Packers were like, okay, you can sit down and meet with Aaron Rodgers. They and did talk do that. About all the weird stuff. They did do that. So they had, yeah, they, that's what I'm saying. They yeah. had a deal in place before that meeting happened. That meeting has long, that meeting's been done yes. happening for almost a week right now. So it feels like if nothing has moved since then, it's, it might be Aaron Rodgers being like, you know what? I'd really rather just retire than go somewhere else. And also like, I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't blame Aaron Rodgers to retire rather than play for the jets. No disrespect, Billy, but I feel but like full disrespect, but full disrespect. Also, they got rid of Braxton Berrios. Yeah. So who's he going to throw the ball to? Yeah. Thirst trap King. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, this feels, it, it feels like we're just waiting for Aaron Rodgers to sign off on him going to the jets because the Packers have moved on to Jordan love. It, it, it definitely like all the comments, everything around it. It just, you can't say some of the things that have been said on both sides and not come to this conclusion. He, he, he went on, yeah, hopefully it'll create a situation where it's a win for both sides. Yeah. We'd love to have it resolved to start the uh, free agency. A win for both sides is not Aaron Rodgers coming back. When would be the the most perfect time for Aaron to drop his his news if he was going to retire? He's going to do it like 3 a.m. tonight, and we're going to have to wake up. I'm going to wake up because my son's going to jump on me. I'm going to see it. I'm going to text everyone. Then someone else is going to wake up and be like, holy shit. I think, and then last person to wake up is going to have FOMO that they were the last person to wake up. It, it could be during the Oscars. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still missing this slap buzz that I had from last year. This Oscars isn't going to have a slap. I need Aaron to interject and put something out in that place. Going back to your point about Ryan Poles not getting phone calls, that is essentially what Aaron Rodgers has done the last month. He just wants to be talked about yeah. on every show. Yeah. He's a fucking diva bitch. Yeah, I hey Aaron, I I need some DMT too. I demand more transparency. Yeah, boom. Suck on that. Bitch. Suck on that. Uh yeah, no, he's There's no reason that he's doing how how this whole process goes through. He's just making it as dramatic as possible so people can keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. That's really all it is. Which is kind of cool. Every, like, I, I, I kind of I I understand. Guess, but he's also done it multiple times now. He's in the so, content game now. Yeah. What if he retired to become a blogger? He's definitely going to have a podcast. Yeah. Aaron sure. Rodgers, a million gonna percent, going to have a podcast. It's going to suck. It's going to totally suck. It's going to be the worst podcast. I'm going to one-star review that shit. Yeah, actually, be, I would watch a podcast that was done in complete darkness. In yeah, a studio with no light and whatsoever, no sound. no sound. You just hear him breathing. Yeah, it's just Aaron. Aaron goes into a darkness <laughs> retreat with a celebrity. So it's like week one, Aaron Rodgers and Joe Rogan probably. Sure. Or Aaron and Kyrie. That yeah. seems right. Aaron yeah. and Kyrie go into a dark room and sit together in silence for three hours. Oh, by the way, I would I would listen to that. That would actually be perfect if you're trying to fall asleep. Yeah. Special fuck you to Kyrie Irving who called out gamblers. What? That, who does he think? Like, this is just crazy how he's just torching everything. What did he say? He was like, uh, yeah, it's it's really uh, the animosity sometimes from, from the crowd. Like, we don't care about, like, your parlay. Like, we're playing ball. It's like, dude, guess what the league, like, the league advertises with with gambling companies. Every league does now. Yeah. You want, you want your $200 million, you're going to get it. Like, what are you talking about? I just... He, he pisses me off. I think Kyrie just doesn't like anybody that tells him anything. Anything. Like, not, not, even, not, no. e not even people that are like telling him what to do. He just doesn't like people talking to him. Yeah, no, He's no. He's like, why are, you, why are you talking to he, me? He is, he is my three-and-a-half-year-old son. The other night, my son, I said, he grabbed my face, and I was like, please don't do that. In that exact tone, he, and then he was, got mad at me. He was like, I don't like when you say something to me. Yeah, that is literally Kyrie Irving. Yeah, Kyrie doesn't like interacting with people. Does, I do not. What, get, what, what do you do you, with that sentence? Where I don't like when you say something. To me. What, That's what he said, and I was like, okay. What gives you the right to tell me to sit down? Well, I'm your coach, Kyrie. Yeah. yeah. Jay Williams called out Stephen A. on first take last week, saying like this seems personal, and, and Stephen A. kind of got flustered, and then came out today or yesterday and said. Kyrie and I have our differences on a personal level, which is none of anybody's business, <laughs> and I'll never tell why. 
he knows why, oh. and his oh, daddy knows no. why. Oh, wow. So Jay Williams was right. That is And personal. now I just need to know what the reason is that, and what Kyrie that was, Irving's dad whoa. did. That was an awesome clip, though, when Stephen A. And, and Jay Williams were just yelling at each other. And it, would, it got personal between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he said, I'm always triggered. Yeah. Yeah, that's what – yeah. <laughs> this is a great line to have. Uh what did he say? I wonder I mean, what Kyrie, what Kyrie's dad could could have done to Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Gambling. This is what he said. Gambling and sports betting have completely taken the purity and fun away from the game at times. I'm going to be honest with y'all. There's a difference between being a diehard fan and supporting your team and loving your team versus somebody that's betting on a parlay or somebody that wants to hit. I agree with that. But do you think people just started gambling last year? Yeah. It, it, like, what are we talking about? It absolutely takes away some of the purity of the yeah, game. Yes. But, but it's but also, the, what Kyrie needs to realize, it's it's also very fun. Yeah. It's always, and we're not saying, like, a diehard Mavericks fan definitely cares more than a bet I make on the Mavericks. We're not arguing that. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, dude. Don't come at me. Yeah, Billy. Uh, People have triggered. been gambling since the Coliseum. That was actually something Thank really you. interesting that, like, the origins of gambling is, like, in the Coliseum. It's yeah. right there it's with methodical. sports since, like, the beginning of time. <laughs> I mean, would you go Would you go to a, a gladiator event and not gamble on it? Yeah. That, I, that that would be disgusting, actually. The people that were in, into gladiator sports for the purity of it, it's like, no, I just want to go see these two humans fight to the death because I love the game. That's fucked up. Yeah. If you're betting on it, I under, I completely understand that. Yeah. If you go to if you go to a, a fucking sword fight and don't bet on it, you should be arrested. Yeah, you're just like, I want the, this, the guy in the red to die. Yeah, I'm rooting for blood. Yeah, why not? But I just would love for Kyrie to put in the thought experiment of, like, take away all gambling, everything all together. And then the NBA goes and negotiates their TV contract. Yep. What happens? Well, what about betting on yourself? Kyrie? Yeah, that's true. He's done that like 17 yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, what else do we have? Anything from this? I mean, the the conference tournament week was took a lot out of me. Took a lot out of me, but it was fun. It's always fun. March is the best. These two weeks, oh, my God. I'm so excited for the break. Um, Odell Beckham's back. Oh, yeah. Odell Beckham worked out for, what, 10 teams, 10 different teams? Somebody said that he's, like, the most jacked up that he's ever been. Yeah, that so makes now, sense. But then, Big Cat, guess when the last time Odell Beckham had over 1,100 yards receiving was? Mm. I think it's 1,100 yards. 2016? 2016. Oh, I nailed it. It's been a while. It's been a while since Odell was, like, top of the line elite as a wide receiver. Do you know what a rumor I heard I, I suck? What? Chiefs. Oh, did you hear that from Leroy? Oh, no, I did. I missed Leroy's yeah. tweet about Le- Leroy it. broke the news I, on, all, on Twi- Saturday. All I see on Twitter is just ads and all quiet on the Western front. Yeah. That's, it's, it's I, a I, we, I can't – I don't see anything on Twitter anymore. Yeah. I don't see anyone's tweets. I just see ads. Are you on the the For You page? Yeah. No, I'm on regular Twitter, but I just – it's like everything else is an ad. I don't remember the last time I've gleaned something from Twitter. Yeah, so, well, if you follow what Leroy had to say, he's reporting that the Chiefs are front runners right mm. now in the Odell Beckham sweepstakes. Mm. But also, he's asking for a shitload of money. So, Odell thinks that he's still in 2016 Odell mode. I'm going to withhold judgment on whether or not teams should sign Odell until I see the most recent clip that his dad puts together of his highlight reel. And it really just needs to be the Super Bowl catch for a touchdown. And then I'll be like, yeah, Odell's still good. Yeah, pretty much. I mean... He definitely will. He'll come back. He won't be the same Odell, but then he'll make one or two plays where you're like, yep. Counterpoint, if he signs to the Chiefs, the Chiefs are all the way back. They're all the He's way gonna back. He's going to have – Odell I, Beckham's going to have 2,300 yards receiving if he if he signs with the Chiefs. If he signs with the Chiefs, I'm going to pick the Chiefs to win the AFC West. That's bold. Yep. I think yep. – Yep. I think, yep. I think this is Denver's year. <laughs> I think Denver's back. Yeah. They did it. Uh, okay. Anything else before we do who's back of the week? And then we're going to get all into the – we're going to get inside the brackets with Mark Titus. Anything? Going once, going twice. Scotty Scheffler's a beast. Scotty Scheffler's mm-hmm. a fucking beast. And I'm not going to say someone that we know choked. But he went in the water. But he wasn't going to win anyways. He was He was on a run. He was on a hot streak. And there's barely any water on that hole. When was the last time... When was the last time... Uh, Max Homer choked. Whoever won the, the TPC at Sawgrass won the Masters. I need tiger. somebody to look that up. Ty- I, yeah, was it Tiger? tiger. tiger? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. You're probably right about that. Yeah. So tiger. it's probably a good thing that Max didn't win this. Yeah, no, we're gearing up. Listen, it's all about the Masters. It's all about Augusta. None of this matters. I I think every golfer is born with a finite number of wins inside of them. You don't want to waste it on the TPC. Correct. That's like the seventh or eighth major. Correct. We want to save that for the Fortnite, for the Genesis, 
anything else that's named after video game systems, and then the Masters. I, uh, yeah, John or uh, Scotty Scheffler is so fucking good. He's so dialed in. It's insane. Him and John Rom. Yeah, I was gonna say like well, John Rom had diarrhea. When when somebody's locked in, the two most fearsome golfers when they're dialed in right now. Nobody can beat either Scotty Scheffler or John Rom. Yeah, when they're dialed in. No, it's it's they're on a different level. And John Rom, yeah, he had diarrhea. What are you gonna do? It Most, just sucks when you get. I feel bad for John Rom because when you're a little bit heavier and you get diarrhea, people automatically assume like, well, shouldn't have had that fucking ice cream in the pizza. Like they they judge you. Like if yeah. I get diarrhea, people look at it differently than when you get diarrhea. That's, That's true. That's just a fact. People, people, they, they diarrhea shame me where they're like, well, no shit, you fat slob. Yeah. If you I, get it. They're like, they're like, oh, make another... sure you drink some water. No. Like, make sure you, you stay food hydrated. Poisoning. No, if yeah, I, if, oh, you food poisoning. No, if I get it, it's like, oh, it's another Tuesday. Yeah. But no, this is how people judge. It's not right. When I heard John Rahm had diarrhea, I was like, of course he did. He fucking went to Sonic last night. All that paella. Yeah. Runs right through you. Yeah. So shout out John Rahm. Shout out John Rahm. Stay strong, bro. Uh, most impressive golfing of the week. Goes to Trent, though. You see Trent stuck it yeah. on the green on 17? Yeah, he did. Max could never. Yeah. Again, Great shot by Trent, though. Max went into the water. It's nails. Not a lot of water. It was a very funny there's video. A, there's a lot of non-water on that hole. It's, it's a very funny video that they put out where they had all the amateurs try to hit it onto the green the day before the sawgrass, mm -hmm. before the TPC, I mean, and like 90% of them hit it in the water on their first shot. And then of those guys that hit in the water, like 90% of that 90% hit it in the water again on yeah. their second shot. I would, I would be staying. I'd still be staying there. I just, I just hold it out. Yeah, I'd swish it. It would no go problem. right in the cup. No problem. Uh, all right, let's do who's back of the week. Hank, you ready? I'm ready. Who's back of the week? Um, who's back of the week is baseball. Yeah, yeah. World Baseball Classics going on. Wasn't getting a lot of buzz. It was kind of last week. It was like, damn, baseball is dead. There's no, there's no buzz around this this weekend. It was, it was popping off. A lot of good clips. Great uh, Britain's jerseys. Great Britain's jerseys. So funny. Looked like they lost their jerseys the night before, and they had to like go to the jersey store like down the street and just print print jerseys as quick as they could they like we need jerseys on. in an hour yeah what can you do for us we just need the words great britain on them all right that's good enough right yeah, they get ironed on there uh how big are the bases are they know. big i don't know i don't think that they're not big enough for me to care about baseball uh, they need to be 20 percent bigger did you see the, the so shohei big. clip no he hit a home run yeah. and all uh, a woman caught the ball and then everyone for, in the is he playing for us no that's bullshit. We should get him. Everyone in the crowd, they passed the ball around, and everyone in the p crowd got to take a picture, and then they nicely brought the ball back to the original girl. It was so respectful. And it was like, that would never happen. Is this, just, so is this like the upside-down world of Philly? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What the hell's going on? I think, just, it's good culture. <laughs> no, I think I think that means that Japan's a bad sports town. Yeah. I think a real sports town. Is that town, where it's taking place? No, but that's... I think it's all over the place. Yeah, but, but the, what? the fans... I think so. Like they're doing home games? Th there were Japanese fans that were passing it around to themselves. Got it. A real sports culture would have been so drunk that they would have thrown up on each other yeah. and then fought over the ball. See, this is another thing with the Twitter broken. I like saw – I'd see it like once every, like I don't know, a couple hours. Like, oh, that's going on. I just – March is college basketball. This is my same argument with, with XFL. Like, March is college basketball. In the World Baseball Classic, they should at least, if they're not going to have the bigger bases, let them use aluminum bats. Yeah. That would be sick. Ping. Just here, yeah. Like Schwarber would be going yard oh. all over. Is the Schwarber place. playing? Yeah, yeah he had a bomb. Oh, yeah, I'm, in. I'm in. I'm in. All right, that's Schwarber. it. I'm in. You, Captain, sold me. you we, should have started with. We that, should just dude. call him Captain America. Yeah, you should have started with Captain that. America. Uh, and then also, by the way, we should say on this podcast the fact that that they call it Chinese Taipei is bullshit. That's Taiwan. Oh. We recognize Taiwan on this podcast. We're not we're not communists, are we? Hell no. No, nah, I, mean, I don't think so. I don't think so either, but I don't. I need to do my own research. Yeah. Okay. You gotta wait. Wait. No. Hank's got to wait for all the facts to, to come out. No, I still want you to speak for me. That that's yeah. pretty. Don't put words in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, so you guys, you guys are no. We said we don't CCP know. Apologists. We don't know yet. We're gonna have to. It's fine. This seems like an ongoing issue. You guys love China. When did it? Uh, when did it, did you just add Trump to your repertoire? China. China. <laughs> He's Australian. Uh, you're, Trump. The, you're the la you're the last guy to add Trump to your. <laughs> no, it's it's Australian Trump. Um, this wall is going to be ten feet higher. <laughs> The uh, the the Chinese. I I will will side with Taiwan. Good good. Hank, what if they give us the bag? Though? I've I've been convinced. What if the CCP gives us the bag? No, I'm siding they, with Taiwan. I don't think we're that going they, live tour. They don't allow this podcast in China. Yeah. Okay, we're going live tour. Hank, yeah. I'll get back to you. Let me. Okay, give me some time. Don't pressure me. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and then 
in in the real shocking news of the weekend, the strip club that John Morant was oh, at. Oh, that was mine. Really, oh, okay, sorry. I'll, I'll wait for no, it. No, that's okay. It was a great visual. Well, yeah, I was just like, wait, wait. I, was, I have the John strip Morant's, club that John, John Morant back. went to. He was in a private room throwing money, getting a lap dance. Like, so uh, this they, is crazy. They asked. Uh, they Shotgun Willie's is the, is the strip club. So John Morant's all the way back because Shotgun Willie's owner uh, came out and said he spent over fifty k on tips Holy a few shit. weeks ago. He said this kid, real young, was exceptionally respectful and sweet, and he did not drink. He's marvelous. He gets it. I don't. I feel like Shotgun Willie's making a bad business decision here. Why? I don't think you want to like blow up the spot of your famous uh, clientele that's dropping fifty k. No, but it's good. It's why? Why is that bad? That I that looks good for John Morant. It does, but I don't it think also, other players are want to. Yeah. Worry like, about yeah, their like, pictures being out yeah, there. Yeah, other players going to a strip club and dropping 50K and Shotgun Willies does a press release. Mm. I think that they mm. didn't put the pictures out there. I uh, think that was somebody else. That was in the investigation, I think. Either way. Somebody leaked it. I think it's like if you're John Morant, the pictures, did you see the pictures? Yeah, so I understand most, that. The, the craziest part of the picture was that uh, John Morant in the VIP section, he had papered every surface in this massive VIP room with cash. There were tables, there were booths, there, the floor was covered in cash. It was a snow globe of cash when you walked in. That looked awesome. I saw that and I thought to myself, yeah. I may have been premature in discussing how immature John Morant was because he, the interior decorating that he yeah. did with money, well, I want to have a room in the house that I buy that's just wallpapered with money. Here's, here's uh, a point to my side, though. Uh, maybe the horniest man online uh, in in the world. Stephen A. Smith is very Stephen upset. Shea. Stephen A. No, Stephen. Well, he also is. But Stephen A. Smith said, "What do people think happens here? Why is the club releasing these? Feels like a massive invasion of privacy. Why would any big spenders go there ever again?" Stephen A. Smith goes to Shotgun Willie's all the time. That's what I'm reading from this. And then he followed up with saying, "You know what? I have a lot of feelings about the John Morant Strip Club photos being released. Frankly, I'm ticked off about the whole situation. He, like." Stephen A. Smith is probably a preeminent strip club goer. Yeah. And he's now got to be on red alert that Shotgun Willies is, is airing dirty laundry. Well, we don't know that Shotgun Willies released the photo. But that's what I'm saying. Shotgun it could, it Willies, could have been released by the police that are investigating but it. But the owner, yeah. like, talked about it. The yeah. owner could have just been like, no, I never saw him. The owner saying, like, he was very respectful. We love him. I would be okay with that. I'd, be, I'd Smith, be fine with that. I'm signing with Stephen A. Smith. He's a, he's a strip club guy. You know he's a strip club guy. It's also obviously a very uh, serious topic, but Gilbert Arenas has had some some hilarious lines in the oh, whole yeah. thing. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. He good. said he was a uh, – he called John Moran a philanthropist, donating 50K to a local community. Mm -hmm. And I think he said, like, at least when I got caught, like, I was trying to get money from someone. Or, like, there was a reason why I was caught, like, got in trouble with guns. I wasn't just flashing it for Instagram. Yeah. He's like, to my credit, I was trying to I was trying to rob my teammate. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was like, yeah, my teammate owed me money, and I had to get it. Yeah, he, also, he also had a story about, you, you told the story about Mello saying that, like, David Stern just went in and, and like, strong-armed him. He had a story about that, too, that when all of it went down, David Stern was like, we have two options, 50-game suspension, or uh, you don't take the suspension, I just take all your money. <laughs> and he was like, okay. I'll, and, and then, like, and, and Gilbert was like, all right, see you next year. And that was it. That was the negotiation. One of my favorite stories about, uh, I think it was when Gilbert Arenas was on the Wizards with Deshaun Stevenson. Um, Deshaun Stevenson used to keep an ATM in his house. He had an ATM yeah. installed in his house because he would have parties all the time. He'd have strippers over. And then he knew that his teammates would spend a shitload of money on him. So he had an ATM with like nine ninety nine service transaction fees. So he was just taking a tax from all of his teammates every time they come over that's to his great. house. It's like Jimmy Butler that, and his coffee. That's hustling, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, who's your who's back? Uh, my who's back of the week is Kirk Cousins because we've got a video coming out tomorrow, right, Max? Correct. From Super Bowl week. Correct. Uh, I, I did a little one-on-one -on -one, uh, slinging it with Kirk Cousins. We just passed the ball back and forth, and I put him through the ringer about what to do if he was presented – with an option like he had at the end of the season against the Giants this year, who's he going to pass the ball to? Does he make the right decision? Does he fuck it up? Who knows? You have nice. to tune in tomorrow and figure it out. And Stephen Chase in it, right? Stephen Chase in it. Stephen, it, it's me and Kirk throwing the ball back and forth, and then Chase my guy on the sidelines that catches the ball for me, so nice. I, don't, I don't break no, any fingers. You don't want that. Hurt. I don't. I'm, I'm, that's a, yeah. below my pay grade to catch balls. I like that. Uh, Billy, my who's back is your even, face. My face is back. Mm -hmm. We were. 
we were given a picture over the weekend that we promised to not release. Billy's face was in a bad place on Friday night. Yeah. Now that my face is back, you can release it. You should release it. Release well, the pictures. Well, maybe. We'll we'll find the right time. You look like you just got stung by a thousand bees. I look like I got my face like beat, like yeah. a bad beat. It was crazy. You remember when Aaron City- Rodgers doesn't sign with the Jets? Yeah, you got to release, release it. Nice. Oh, if he signs, I'll release it. Okay. 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 Yeah, or, sure. And Either if he way. doesn't sign. If okay. he retires, you never have <laughs> to just, release it. I'll just put it in the Aaron Rodgers blog. I post, Boom. so please click on it. There you go. There we go. Page like views, baby. You remember when, when Sidney Crosby had mumps? That's kind of what you looked like. It also was just picture. funny having Billy text us out of the blue being like, I'm going to send you a picture if you promise not to, to tweet it. Credit to us. We all had to promise. And we you did. Got, yep. Thanks, guys. No, uh, credit to, stop me in my tracks. Really, credit to the conference championship Friday. Because if it wasn't that, I would have tweeted it. Yeah. Also, but I was I, I like barely saw the text. It, it was it was a great Billy moment because he it was on Friday and he was like, "Hey guys, I can't work on Sunday because this is what my face looks like right now." But and we saw it and we we're like, "Yeah, you know what? He's kind of right. He shouldn't come <laughs> into the office." If I still looked like that, I don't think I would have came into the office. You're very jolly. Yeah. Um, but my who's back is a unified world heavyweight belt. Good. For the there's a possibility that for the first time since April 2000. One heavyweight boxer may be able to hold all of the belts. And that's because Tyson Fury put up the proposition to Alexander Usyk that if he took a 70-30 split with him, he would fight him to unify all the belts. Oh, it's nice. not official, but it's they're looking at April 29th for Wembley. But Tyson Fury said, I get 70%, you get 30%. In every day that you don't accept this offer, you get less of a percent. That's awesome. Usyk, Usyk called him on it. He said, as long as you donate a million dollars to Ukraine, I'll take the fight. And it sounds like it's going ahead. So Tyson, this is going to be a great match because Tyson's been boxing a lot of bigger guys who aren't as skilled, big right hands. I mean, the the Fury Wilder trilogy was insane. I mean, the Joshua Usyk fight was amazing. I'm actually super pumped for this because you know Usyk is going to go the distance with him. He's got the uh, he's got the stamina. He's got you know the feet. I think this is going to be a really good fight. Are they going to add Rough and Row- Rowdy's belt to it? I mean, that's not all the belts. True. True. We got to unify all the belts. Yeah, they should make a belt that's made out of all the other belts, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's what you like get. Like the Iron Throne. Yeah, that would be sick. I'm just. Hyped. I would watch that if it was a giant belt, and then they just make like the last two rounds really suck, and the kid in the wheelchair wins it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But are you spoiler, over are you over it yet, Hank? Over what? Game of Thrones. No. Still upset. I mean, imagine the Klitschko's in Game of Thrones. Once yeah. I start to rewatch, they'd just be it, beating the be shit out of each other and probably yeah. make out at some point. It hasn't happened yet. I actually think Usa could beat Fury. That's okay. why I think Fury's yeah. been trying to duck him for the big oh. belt for, the, for the, all the belts, all the belts, all the belts. And also, some guy's suing uh, Buffalo Wild Wings for having boneless wings. He says that they're really chicken nuggets and that they've been selling an inferior product for an upmarket price. What does Wait. he think boneless wings are? This guy, it, he just figured this out now. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings has been fucking me over, and he's suing them. For there should be a so. law that if you if you have a dumb enough lawsuit, that you can then open yourself to get sued by everybody yes. that has to read about it. Yes. Yeah. Wait till he finds out that French fries aren't from France. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, also, economic meltdowns. World's gonna crash today. Is that a thing? No, no we're uh, good. No. Two Silicon banks Valley, Listen, Silicon Valley Bank. I re- I read a Twitter thread. Uh, pretty much, uh, those guys are are fucking crooks. They knew it was gonna collapse. They all sold their stock right before. Lock them up. Throw them next to Hillary in jail. Done. What about ev- everything else? No, 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 no. We just print more money, dude. If you run out of money, the government prints more money. That's how it works. The thing is, money is not even real. Right. We just added on to the deficit. Or not, no, nah, what is the, 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 def, the, the debt? The debt. Yeah. Dude, that debt, you think we're ever going to pay that debt? No chance. My favorite is when people are like, think about it like it's uh, your, your household credit card bill. There's a lot more shit that goes on yeah. in the national debt. You can just add a number to it if you want to. Bro, Dude. we need like a we need like a ten million leg parlay to get out of this debt. Oh, you remember? We're when, never getting out of that you, debt. You remember when people are like, gamble just, responsibly. Just print the one trillion dollar coin. We should do that. Yeah. Just print. Just make a coin, and then tell me that the money's real. Yeah. You know why I don't have to pay the debt? Why? Nukes. Yeah. That yeah. That is like, true. Come get it. That is true. <laughs> you won't. Yeah. That is true. We're gonna break my legs. We're basically like the bat, like the the tough ass dude on the on the block who like borrows the tools from his neighbor. He's like, 
They're my tools now. Say something about yeah, it. Yeah, you're not gonna. You know what? I wish I wish somebody would yeah. try to collect on that debt. Yeah, no, Hank, don't worry. Like people are gonna freak out. Whatever. Maybe we'll just make more money on GameStop, Diamond Hands, that shit. But we'll be fine. Yeah. All right. Pretty yeah, good. I was just checking. I was curious, but now I'm I'm good. Okay, good. It was funny the clip of Jim Cramer just being like SVP, SVB. Sorry, SVP. S SVB has the fundamentals for a huge bounce back. This was like a few months yeah. ago. He's like bye bye bye. Boom, gone. It's all the nerds in fucking California. They had a little bank with their friends. It, it went under. Who cares? And they, I think people were telling every company that they were investing in, like, I'll only invest in you if you put the money in Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah. Dude, they all Whatever. sold be their fine. stock. They're, be they're, fine. They're, they're, they're crooks. They're not going to go to jail, but they should go to jail. I was yeah In that Twitter thread, the, some guy had uh, all the percentages that, like, the basically the entire C-suite sold in, in like, February. And then I don't know what you got to be to be like a rich guy simp online, but another person responded was like, "We have to double check because that's actually when bonuses come in, so that might have been a scheduled payment of mm, all the or, okay, or sell off." It's like, dude, you really went online to be like, "Hey, these guys who who ran a bank that has now gone under, we should wait and, and make sure because like we don't want to accuse someone of something wrong here." The real take that you should have at all times is anybody that makes more money than you yeah. should be in jail. Correct. And if you if right. you disagree with eat that, the, no, and and anyone who makes ten x what you make, you should we should eat guillotine. Yeah, we should and eat, then them. Eat, eat the rich. And then if you disagree with that, then you're a bootlicker. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. These are big time economic. We just yep. took all the AWS to econ one hundred and one. Print more money. Hate people who are more rich yes. than you. Brackets. And if and if someone wants to fucking come and try to collect this debt, try us. Yeah, my my general rules of thumb are if they make more money than me, they're evil. If they're younger than I am. Then they're a zoomer bitch. Yeah, and they and they probably will like like. Then I'm gonna, then they're gonna they'll eat probably me. Do, they'll probably do like the knockout game with me and put me on TikTok. Yeah, this, <laughs> this, this is why this is why I eat like shit all the time is because I know that anyone younger than me that yeah. wants to eat me. Yeah. Good Dude, luck. I'm I'm not putting it past Billy for one day to just like sucker punch me and just be like TikTok knockout <laughs> games back. Mm -hmm. like, Fuck, dude. I got caught. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Can't really yeah. do anything. Or else you're a boomer. Yeah. Like, he got me. Ultimate prank. Knock someone out who's not looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? A, that's 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 top-level humor. Um. All right. Let's get to Mark Titus. Let's talk about the bracket. We're going to break it all down. But we've had a few minutes here, PFT. We're probably about a half hour, 45 minutes of the show so far. I talked to you about pepperoni to start. Yeah. You said you were going to think about it. I want you to really think about it. I'm thinking about it because pepperoni's the best. I'm it gonna is have, literally the best. My, so the only thing is, I might, I might even get two dogs. Is there Ooh. enough pepperoni to share between two dogs? Yes, there is. There's absolutely. And if you get your pup pepperoni, you ever heard a dog say "woof yeah"? Woof yeah. Yeah, because they say that whenever they get the pepperoni. Look at look at Whitey right now, sleeping, snoozing. He is uh, dreaming about pepperoni, and. You got to get the pepperoni original beef flavor snacks. Celebrate your favorite sports teams. Watch maybe on the couch while you're watching uh, some basketball this March, April, May, June, whenever it's going on to with some pepperoni. Hang out. Make sure that your dog, your best friend is treated great with pepperoni. PFT, I feel like you're closer to being a pepperoni guy. I'm thinking about it. Okay. All right. Well, let's do some bracket talk and then we'll get back to it. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it more. But you can go and be a pepperoni dog owner right now. Go to pepperoni.com to find a bag near you and send us a pic of you and your dog filling out your bracket for a chance to win some PMT merch. Tweet us at Pardon My Take and at Pepperoni. I'll retweet any dog. So you send us your dog with the pepperoni. We're going to retweet it. We love dogs on this podcast. We love making sure our dogs have the best treats in the absolute world. So pepperoni is the place to do it. Go to pepperoni.com to find a bag near you. Okay, here he is, Mark Titus. Okay, we're able to book an elusive special guest. It is Mark Titus back in studio. Mm -hmm. Mark Titus Show. Go subscribe on the YouTube, the podcast. Uh, first of all, how have, how have your first two weeks of Barstool been? I've enjoyed it. Uh, I, everyone's been very kind to me. Nice. Everyone? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> I noticed so <though laughs> Who's your no no who who's your least favorite person so far? Uh honestly Brandon. Yeah. yeah Brandon okay. Brandon Walker. I set you up for that uh, one. All yeah. 
And, I'm, and 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 the the really stupid part about that about saying Brandon is he's going to think it's like a bit and he's going to be like yes they're talking about me which is what he wants. But yes. like yeah. I'm just answering that genuinely. Like yeah. Brandon Brandon texted me at all times. Anytime anything goes well for me, he's like this is bullshit. This should have been mine. Yep. And anytime anytime anything goes poorly for me, he's like you suck. Yeah. And mm-hmm. He reminds you of it. So I I think you've been uh fitting in seamlessly. I did have my first red flag happen tonight what? on a cultural fit. Uh, we're in the office right now. The office water is shut off because of uh, construction or something. Uh, Max had to go take a shit at Macy's. Shout out Macy's. No free ads. Shout out Macy's. Uh, Titus was like, I'm going to go to my hotel room and take a piss real quick. I was like, bro, just yeah. piss in this jug. And he looked at me like, what? It felt like an HR trap that you were like, just just go mm. ahead and piss in this bottle. I promise nothing. Do I have permission <laughs> to, to pee in any jugs during this interview? I mean, you can do what you want around here, Casey. So that's yeah, permission. Kind of. Is that permission? You're not gonna, you're not gonna sue us I'm if like, we yeah. No, no. I felt like I don't, I don't think I have Sweetie, that clout. Let's not to... get upset about a little piss in a jug. You're, you've been an indoor cat for a while, Mark. <laughs> and now this is like letting your indoor cat outside for the first time. Like, go cause some ruckus in the bushes. Yeah. Pee wherever you want. Fox it's, doesn't do any sexual no. harassment. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the bracket. Jesus. Let's do the bracket. Let's fucking get into. The let's bracket. talk about the bracket. So uh, Jake and I just got done recording my show, uh, where we filled out our entire brackets. And I, the only way I would describe my process with this was, I felt like I was at war. I felt like this is a legacy play for me this year, okay. um, because I have the last two years my national champion has lost in the first round of my bracket. That's tough. It's tough. You're an expert, though. Um, I won a national championship in 2019 with Virginia, but then COVID happened, and the haters are saying that I've lost my touch and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm mm. not an expert. And so this is a legacy play for me, and I can feel it. I can feel the pressure going into this tournament. Now, when you won with Virginia, yeah. did you you so you picked Virginia to win the year after they got eliminated right. as the one right. seed to the 16 seed? Right. That's pretty good. I I thought so. I thought I was. I thought at that point I had arrived. Um. But the haters are saying that was a one-off. All right, and so I'm actually okay. So yeah. let's, let's cut to the chase. You have who, to win two titles to be a legend. Yes, you, know? you do. I've yes. only won one. Who's who's Tom your, who's your team? Behan. Who's it going to be this year? Um, well, do you, do you want him to reveal his winner? Well, I want to know who not to bet on oh. right off the bat, <laughs> and then people can skip the rest of this interview. Just skip like, the whole interview. God, Mark Tice is on every show now. Uh, so I did when we sat down to fill out the bracket. This was not my intent. Oh, no. Um, you didn't do it, did I you? I did it. I did it, Dan. Uh, They're criminals. I know you they are. took Alabama? I took Alabama. Oh. I was filling it out, and it just happened. Did they Ooh. circle the wagons? Is Alabama Ooh. like, was, it's us against the world and the I criminal th- justice it system? It was that. It was they They play the best defense, I think, in the country. They have the best player in the country, probably. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't mean for it to happen. It was just wrong place, wrong time, I guess. I, I, as yeah, I was filling was. out the, <laughs> was. Was was. the bracket. <laughs> I, you can only control what happens while you're filling out right. your bracket. Wait, Everything I else. Had, you I, had, it you was asked, out of my control. Yeah. You asked Jake to bring your bracket to you. Does yes. that implicate Jake as well? Yes, yes. yes true. And, and Jake <laughs> actually texted, the, the bracket is hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Okay. You know, who'd you take, Jake? I took Arizona. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I didn't like. I didn't like that pick for Jake. Uh, you just did that. But Jake, different. Jake, I, I, as I pointed did out on the see? show, Jake is a storyline slut, and he just oh, like I just aligned all the story. He was just going crazy <laughs> for. He, he ultimately had Tommy Lloyd versus Mark Few. Oh my god! In an he Arizona Gonzaga game. Yeah. Yeah. I have all blue blood playing in the garden down the street in the Sweet Sixteen. Oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. just stuff you want to see for the good of the game. Exactly. All right. Now so, you're a big Mark Few guy, right, Jake? <laughs> I mean, besides having them in the national championship game, I do not condone what you're setting me up for. Well, just bringing his dogs back from, from a little lake house thing? Maybe. Disavow. <laughs> Maybe Mark Few is Disavow. just really allergic to dogs, and that's yeah. why he was driving erratically yeah, when they yeah. were up in the front seat with Those him. Those dogs were all over him when he got that DUI. Uh, okay. Uh, should we go? Should we go? Let's go region by region. Let's, all right. Let's talk yep. region by region. Um, by the way, I have a little trivia for you to start. You ready for this? So when you're filling out your bracket, just remember, because everyone always fills out their bracket, and I think what happens is I call it the Dickie V bracket, where you blindly start filling it out, and then you look up, and you're like, I have three ones and a two. That's that's what happened to me. The, that yeah, the Dickie V bracket. That was my bracket. Now, it's yeah. hard to predict, but since 2012, uh, there's only been one year that there hasn't been a seven or higher in the final four. So there's... Every year, there's been at least one seed has been yep. broken every bracket. Do you remember what year it was? Uh, Trivia? 
Every year there's been a seven or higher. Since 2012. At Except least one. one in the final four. I don't know. My brain doesn't work that way. I don't I don't I can't think it of was anything. your year. Was oh really? Twenty nineteen. UVA, Texas Tech, Michigan State, and Auburn. Auburn, yeah. Yeah. The lowest seed there was a five seed. So Thanks. just keep that in mind. Okay. When you're filling out your bracket, there's gonna be someone who crashes the party. I, I, I did go and uh, You did the Dickie V? I did the Dickie V. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I acknowledged it as I was doing it, but as I keep saying, like this is a legacy play for me and I don't have time to get cute. I this is not a this tournament is very serious to me, and like I don't. That's the problem. Is like I I get that you got to take a big swing, but you take a big swing and miss. Yeah, no, you look like a fucking moron, and I'm not in a position to make myself look like a moron. Yes, I agree. All right, so let's so, go anyway, through it. Should, let's so go through. We'll, it. Yeah. we'll go uh, how you read. So we'll t we'll start with the South. Yep. Uh, let's do big picture in the South, and then we can all pick who we have coming out of the South. Big picture is this is super fun. These teams are fun to watch. If you're someone who hates watching college basketball because you think that there's not enough points, that the kids can't make open shots, all that sort of thing, this is the region for you. Uh, Alabama can score a ton of points in a hurry. Um, they they are – obviously, I picked them to win it all, but uh, they, they shoot a ton of threes. They play up-tempo. They're awesome to watch just in terms of pure basketball, as long as they're not throwing the ball over the gym. Um, Arizona well, – there's, yeah. there's a couple other as long as – for well, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, they take a ton of shots. Yes, they do. They that is actually a fact. Like that's literally not a lot of charges true. on them. That is true. Are their that friends? Probably... Their friends take a lot of shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's... he was on the team. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Arizona plays very fast as well. Scores a lot of points. They're fun to watch. Um, they're very fun. They're and super fun. Yeah. I think we touched on this when you were on the uh, two weeks ago. If you aren't. Arizona is very fun for a lot of reasons. They have two very skilled big guys. They have uh, who's their who's the guard? Not Kirk Creasa. Courtney Ramey. Yeah, he's yeah. very very good. And Kirk Creasa is like if you miss the days, if you're like, oh man, I wish we had like a Bobby Hurley like yeah. point guard that we can all hate. Kirk Creasa is that guy. He will. He will like pump up the crowd when someone else does something good yes. on his team. Yes. And then he will throw it off someone's face. He is that guy. I, I, I think I said this on the show when I was on last time, though. He he also has like a, a tinge of self sabotage. Yes. When things start going well. Mm -hmm. Yes. He just he, he can't help himself. He has to throw an alley oop over the and backboard. He's also got a and, tiny mini Grayson Allen in him where like once a game he'll get in like he'll get like legs tangled up and you'll be like, did yeah. anyone take a nut shot there? He doesn't go all the way, so I'm not going to put that on him. But there's a lot of like there'll be little moments where you know, or or even uh, you know, when when the guy comes up to the to the coach's box to call a timeout, but you know, advances it to half court, he'll try and to he'll try to steal, steal it, it. Yeah, and he'll yeah. be like, "Yo, dude, chill out." Like he he'll lives, have those. He lives in the gray area, basically. Right. He right. loves yeah. living in that gray area. Right. Yeah, I like that. He's they are very fun edge. to watch. So Arizona's that Baylor, the three seed, is also that they they score a ton of they their three guard lineup that they they all shoot threes and make a ton of threes and that's like their whole mo. They. They're not going to win the national championship because I don't think their defense is good enough. But they it's are been bad recently. They are so fun to watch. Um, and I just think on down the line, like Virginia is not quite as fun as they they can be. Obviously, so that kind of starts to fall apart at the four or five. But Creighton, I think, is a fun team. NC State's a fun team. Missouri the, is another team that gets up and down and Missouri, they score a ton of points. Yeah, Missouri Utah State game should be a lot. That'll of fun. be that'll a be fun. Lot of fun. Is that going to be one of those situations where it's a ten seven, but the, you think the ten's going to be favored, or you think Missouri's going to be favored? Well. The Mountain West. The Mountain we should, West. We should yeah. say it. The Mountain West is one and eleven. I brought I overall brought a... since 2016. And if you don't remember the Mountain West last year, they had four teams in the tournament. They were eliminated from the tournament in ten hours. They didn't make it to Friday. <laughs> I brought my uh. So before the bracket came out, I was sitting in the hotel room and I jotted down like a manifesto based on because what happens is when the bracket comes out, I get. I, I just get sucked into like Matt. I, I do what Jake does, which is I, I look into storylines and I think like, wouldn't that be cool if this happened? And I lose all sense of what makes actual sense. So I wrote down a bunch of shit before I even saw what the matchups were. So that way it was like a reminder to myself, don't do this when the bracket actually comes out. My number one bullet point was Mountain West. They've been to four Sweet 16s in the history of their conference. Yeah. In the history One and of the eleven conference. since 2016. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I made and, sure. And what was that? Just San Diego State when they were really good? Yeah, they they went to two, and then Must with Nevada went to one. Yep. I think. Oh, I love that team yeah. so much. They had the twins, then, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were so much fun. I'm just looking at. I go by uh, my Bible is the Ken Palm luck statistic. <laughs> That's and, a great and, stat. Yeah, it's a great, great stat. stat. Uh, Missouri is the luckiest team. 
that is you know from a, a power conference. That's Are they really the tournament? Yeah. So it's Missouri and then Kansas. Ooh. Kansas is also a very lucky team. I'm not going to bet against wow. Kansas. I didn't know that. Do I feel you like, think they factored in Bill Self having to go to the hospital? Well, Bill Self's unlucky. Bill, no, that was planned. Okay, it's lucky that they caught it in time. We were saying he got a that, stint put in. We were. I hope Bill Self is okay. I actually used my one uh, thoughts and prayers on Friday to uh, Bill Self, but we were joking before that it would be funny if he came back. And he was just fully bald. And it was yeah. like, it was a Joe Buck. Like he actually was getting hair plugs and something went wrong. You're like, we're going to have to like, like, like uh, all quiet on the Western front. Like we're going to have to take off the leg. We're going to have to take off the hair bill. Yeah. Like it's suffocating you. You it, can't breathe. <laughs> it would be awesome. I, Bill self as a bald guy. I would actually bet. I would bet the farm on. Yes. Yeah. Like he's yes. finally living his authentic life yeah. at that point. Uh, you're, you're Virginia. Who's uh, so that would be, I'm going to circle that as maybe one of my upsets. Furman, uh, Furman bombs. You should actually mark Furman. Yeah, yeah, mark Furman. Upset. Yeah, uh, Furman bombs. They just chuck, uh, and that's how you can beat Virginia because they're the pack line defense. They're gonna like if you could just shoot over them, I, you might have a chance. I uh, as as the preeminent Tony Bennett lover, um, I I'm I they, I'm not saying the game. I'm worried that maybe, like, as as everyone has started to figure out that three is worth more than two, and as mm -hmm. every team, Wait. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, no, Steph Steph Curry, taught I think, us taught us that in 2016, and then it's starting to make its way to Middle America, and all these teams are are starting to learn that. I I am worried that the pack line might be a thing that like it might not have yeah. its heyday might have come and gone. Yes. Now, would it be fun to watch UVA against Alabama? Like two um, completely opposite styles of basketball. I don't. I, I think Alabama. Yeah, will, I don't. Well, think I think that Alabama would be win by forty. Because I think you what think would so? happen is Alabama would get up like fifteen to two. To, to be like, fair, Virginia to, can't come back. From so that. it's clear. So I'm clear. Like if they played, I would 100 percent cheer for Virginia to win that game. But uh, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't have much faith in Virginia. No, yeah, that's so. That's one of my upsets. Also, I have a question for you because we're going to get to more of these. But how would you classify a revenge game? Because that's everyone's favorite storyline. I saw someone tweet, uh, West Virginia, Maryland, the Mellow Trimble revenge game. Yeah, no one remembers that. Nobody, who, who remembers no, that? No, who could it, was obviously, uh, it was obviously a Maryland fan. Was it, it was Jeff like, D. Lowe? With his, yeah, it was just, <laughs> just like, insane. wait, this is too far in revenge games. Like, that, we can't, this can't be a revenge game of a guy who went to Maryland like eight years ago. Yeah. Not a revenge game, but the winner of that game should get Frostburg. That's yeah. the closest city I can think of to that border. There we go. That is, It's a border war is what it, it is. is. Yeah. It is. West Virginia is another fun team, by the yes, way. Yes, Throw are. them in the, the, the region of fun. Um, yeah, like the most fun outcomes are our West Virginia-Bama game would be fun in the second round. Creighton-Baylor would be fun. Missouri-Arizona would be a ton of fun. Charleston um, Furman would be awesome. Charleston Furman would be yeah. That so that to me the South as a region is the most fun region for sure in terms of uh, if you have if if you're like uh, all three of us are where our schools are not in this thing and we're just. Uh, here for a good We're time. For a second. I just yeah. like saying Charleston. The South Furman. is. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like somebody that's in like the Alec Murdoch trial. Yeah. Is yeah. that a rivalry? Isn't Furman down that way by South Carolina? I, I is it in like South it Carolina? Is. Yeah, I think it, it is. is South mm -hmm. Carolina. Yeah. In state rivalry. Yes, that is an in state go. rivalry. Uh, the, yeah, this, they, the, the, the bracket, the, the, whoever makes the bracket, the NCAA, they did it right in the fact that Alabama was the number one team. They deserved it. I, I don't like them, but they deserved it. Like they, you can even look through, their entire season, they I don't think they ever lost back to back games. They had a couple they what lost four games. One of them was Gonzaga neutral site. Like they yeah. they were good all year long. They deserve the one seed and they by far have the easiest region. Like if they don't win I said this before on our show, but if if Alabama doesn't go to the final four, this is the biggest failure in all of sports. I what what I back you up on is because this is the fun region, I think every one of these teams well, when Alabama wants to get up and go and try to score a ton of points, every single, all the best teams in this region, except for by seed, except for Virginia and, and San Diego State, probably, uh, the rest of them are going to nod along and be like, "Yeah, we want to play this style of basketball." Yeah, let's, and let's, they, let's run, yeah, yeah, let's do, let's do this, and it's not going to work out well for them. So in Alabama, that regard, yeah, it's a great draw for maybe Alabama. they're not hitting their threes. Yeah, you have to make shots. This is, I know how and, this is going to go. Alabama's going to win the national title, and every game will be like, this is the game they're not going to hit at their this threes. Is, yeah. 
Yeah. Just going to keep hitting their threes. But that's why I it, it's they're not just the three point shooting I know. team. They they are going. They're so long and athletic. They're play great. I know. I, know. I hate important. it. I hate it. Length is important. I hate so it. you have Bama coming out of this region. I have Bama. Um, I have Bama over Baylor somehow, which I don't love this Baylor team, but I just like every matchup. It just felt like. I, I like they're 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 a guard oriented team and I felt like that mattered but their defense stinks their yeah. defense stinks it has been really bad I, yeah you know what Jake I apologize wait you have Arizona winning it all all right so I don't apologize I'm gonna take Arizona to get to the final four just because it's anyone but Bama that's fair I, I, and I respect that and I think that's what most people should do but I right. have I have my legacy on the line here yeah. so I have yeah. to well that I mean it tells me that you're <laughs> you're picking with your head yeah. yeah. Not with your heart. Yeah. You're a true analyst. Yes. What, exactly what do you got, PFT? Uh, you know, jump Mark, on the cats Mark, made, Mark makes a good point about Alabama. You want to do some fuck, fuck boy shit with Kirk Creesa? No, you know what I'm going to go with? <laughs> he is a fuck boy. Yes. He's a total fuck boy. <laughs> talk, talk me out of NC State making a little run. Oh. <laughs> talk me out of the Wolf Pack. Well, if you're a Clemson fan listening to this right now, you have to be very upset because yes. Clemson did not make the tournament. Rutgers was the was the main one that everyone's upset about, but Clemson didn't make the tournament. Clemson beat NC State by a thousand on yeah. whatever it was Friday or Thursday. That was an absolute ass kicking. NC State was resting their best players. They knew they were <laughs> going to make the tournament. <laughs> that one, I would be really pissed if that if if I were a Clemson fan right now. So I don't know. NC State has not. The ACC has been weak this year. What about San Diego State? Mountain West. Yeah. This might be it's, the year they turn around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I predict the Mountain West will make it to the, to the second round. Somebody from okay. the Mountain West will San win San Diego okay. State is a team that I have wanted to believe in all year. There, there are a handful of these teams that we can get. Like As we get to other regions, I'll talk about more of them. But uh, it's a team that on paper at the start of the season, I was like, this team's going to be freaking awesome. And all season, even when they lose, I'm like, the, the pieces are there. The pieces are there. If they can just – if they could just – and I've never really seen the San Diego State I've wanted to see all year, but yet they're a five seed, um, and, and they've been and they playing have a well. decent draw, and they've been playing well. They've been playing well. They haven't so lost in a like. I, you know. I I have wanted to believe in San Diego State all year, and I just can never really fully get there. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get there. All right, there you go. San Diego State. Get yourself a Matt Bradley jersey. You're getting there. I'm getting there. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm switching. <laughs> I'm switching back and forth between Alabama, between the Mountain West, and, and the, the Mountain SEC. West and the SEC right now. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm going to say it. San Diego State. All, all right. Four. Why not? Why Listen, not? if they make it more than 10 hours, they will have a successful tournament. Where they, they play in Orlando. I don't know if anyone has, then, if any Mountain yeah. West teams have Friday games. They they hopefully do, so they can not they can have. Last. That was just 10 hours. That broke me. <laughs> last year, uh, Colorado State was the one that I yes. wanted to believe in. Yes. I, I was I was really high on Colorado State and David Roddy. David Roddy, and, yeah. Dude, they were so fun. Yep. and. They lost to Michigan, but that game was like an indie, wasn't it? Yeah, which was horseshit. Yeah, the, Michigan was an 11 seed, and got to play Colorado State. Yeah, anyway. yeah, anyway. that was tough. Uh, all right, East Region, New York City. Yep, Purdue this is the number one seed. I don't. I think Purdue is good. I think they've been fading, but and they they I mean they just won the Big Ten tournament, so obviously well, they played well, but they were fading in Big Ten regular season play. Just seeing Purdue as a one seed, I'm like. Yeah. Someone's going to be it's repulsive. Them. So right. this, I I have Purdue. I've had a future on them for quite some time. <laughs> That's right. Now. I forgot this, about this. I, I'm watching this. I'm watching Purdue play over the last week, and especially today, especially the second half against Penn State. This is shaping up to be a repeat of my doink bet in the Super Bowl all over again because Purdue's going to be their uh, prohibitive one. What are they? The number two ranked team right now? Did they uh, get the overall I think two Houston seed? Was two. Houston got so they're the. I think they're the Four. They might be the fourth. Oh, they're the yeah, fourth. they're the fourth. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I was wrong about that. But Purdue, this feels like the best shot that Purdue's had in a while on paper. Watching them try to navigate the press against Penn State. That's exactly it. They're, they're going to lose. I'm calling it right now. Purdue's going to lose in heartbreaking Somehow, fashion against an inferior opponent. But I'm going to be rooting for them the entire time. They got a bad time. draw. Somehow... Every coach in the Big Ten waits until they're down twelve with like four minutes yeah. left to start pressing Purdue. Yeah. It's <laughs> and if, crazy. And if one team, just one team, looks at the film and says, "Wait a second, what if we built the whole airplane out of the black out of the press? press? Yeah. And what if we just press from the start? Uh, it might work out well for them. Yeah. I. It, it all is going to come down to how Zach Eadie's officiated. Honestly, is like yeah. if, if he gets. 
if he gets a favorable whistle, Purdue's unstoppable. Um, but if, as is uh, every Big Ten team that loses to Purdue gets butthurt about how Zach Eady got away with everything and never gets called for fouls. And I, I experienced it recently in the Big Ten tournament as the Buckeyes uh, got called for like 400 fouls and Eady got called for one and zero mm-hmm. three seconds. Um, but the, the every Big Ten team that goes through it then says, wait till the NCAA tournament when you don't have Big Ten refs. They're going to call so many offensive fouls and over the backs and all that sort of thing. Um, I don't know if it'll happen or not, but and yeah, he's better. If, he's a lot, he's gotten a lot better. Yeah, I mean he like he is his very good. Is a lot better. His defense is a lot better. I th- there there could be a scenario where he goes to make post moves and he turns and like right displaces a defender and the refs are like that's a foul we're gonna call it on you and which they don't call in the Big Ten and the second round matchup for Purdue is either gonna be a Memphis team that if you remember that was one of the that was probably the game of the tournament uh against Gonzaga last yeah. year that was, that was one really of the good, best yeah. games of the entire tournament Memphis has physical players they have guys that can you know go toe to toe with Tur- Purdue and they just beat Houston which is the most physical team in the And they have the Kendrick country. Davis who could score 40 points. Yeah. Uh and Purdue is not exactly elite defensively, um especially their guard. So, yeah, that's And, yeah. and then if Memphis doesn't make it to the second round, Florida Atlantic's really fucking good and which I'm kind of rooting for even though I think Memphis has a better shot against Purdue, but uh we would get uh, Zach Eady versus Vatislav. What's his name? Vatislav Golden, the seven footer for Florida. Yeah. I watched last yeah. night the UAB game because I was rooting for Jelly. This dude's a seven foot white guy. We're gonna have a hilarious visual of those two going up against each other. Yeah, I, I always. Want that. It's always very funny when they do call like a seven foot three guy for over the back on someone who's like six yeah. foot three, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they yeah. just catch the ball above the yeah. other person's head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not fair what they do to Zach Eady sometimes because he's so big. Sometimes, they, right. Sometimes he gets bad whistles. He can't help but be dominant. I'm still riding with my Boilermakers. I'm just, I'm seeing the train that's about, or I guess that's a, a yeah a, a ironic turn of phrase for Purdue. But I'm seeing the train, the train that's about to come through the tunnel and just wipe me out on the track. The train. I know it's going to happen. The train is going to Ohio in the first two rounds, and I don't know if there are any famous instances of trains derailing in Ohio. Oh, no. Oh, God. Um, oh no. That would be bad symbolism for UPFT. Yes. But, yeah. Uh, but Purdue will be playing in Columbus their first two games. So. I like Memphis, too. They play, yeah. like... Purdue, Purdue's going to be the team that everyone picks, the one seed to, to lose. Yeah, first, they right? will. Mm-hmm. That's the team that everyone's going And to. Memphis feels like the team that if they play their best, they are... They can play with anyone. Yeah, absolutely yeah. anyone. Yeah. How how does Purdue not know how to break a press? Uh, the guards are young. The guards, guards are young. Are, can't you just throw the ball to, getting, to Zach Eady also, on the inbound and then have him ditch it to somebody that's coming up the wing? The guards are when young. You put and, it that way. Yeah, and that's what I would do. <laughs> you can also do the the guards uh, hit the wall. They hit the wall. Yeah, yeah the young guys. Mm. This season, high school basketball doesn't go that long. It did look like high school basketball. Watching them yeah, try to just bring the ball up the court. It was yeah, tough. it's young guys. They're like, "Why are we still playing?" I yeah, right. Like we're we're ready for a nap. <laughs> yeah. That's really what you got to say if you're a Purdue fan and, and things go south. <laughs> Your guards are ready for bedtime. Yes, yes, yeah. No, it is crazy seeing some of these teams. Not no, I, 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 I. Uh, I, I'm a little bitter towards Purdue because the Buckeyes were on a dream run there in the Big Ten tournament, and had we beaten Purdue, all we had to do was beat Penn State to make the tournament. So I'm a little bitter. But I, I, I do go back to what I said last time I was on the show. I, I'm i not cheering for Purdue, but if they won the national championship, some small part of me would appreciate how cool it is to now throw out everything we thought we knew about yeah, college right. basketball. It would change and, you know, everything. It would change, it would change everything. Yeah. yeah. At least nine or ten guys are going to get laid in West Lafayette. Yes. Yeah. That night. For the yeah. first time ever. Mm-hmm. For the hot dogs and <laughs> chase, which I don't for. think they have. I, I feel like that would be the, the national title um, among all major sports where more people, more students at that school would lose their virginity yes. than any other well, there's national not championship enough. There might not be enough women. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Sex is sex. That's what I'm saying. Like nine or ten guys. That would be the headline coming out of West Lafayette. Yeah. Dozens of men got laid tonight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for the first time. It's like that or Neil Armstrong landing yeah. on the moon. Which one's yeah. more important for yes. Purdue? Yes. Uh, all right, so this region, other teams. Duke. Duke. Uh-oh. Duke. Uh-oh. This like, is the year, I... right? Like, we were saying b- before you came on that, like, this would be the ultimate for Duke haters. If you're going to pick one year well, for Dan Duke said to you win want, that, you yeah. want, I want, you want for Duke. It'd yeah. be so Duke. funny to see them win. I think... I, I would have to agree. I think because uh, we don't. I, I don't think John Shire is ever going to be hateable. I don't. No. I, I think I like we don't hate him now because we're comparing him to K. But I honestly think in twenty years it, when he's if he's still a Duke, he's I not going to be like hateable. Kid a kid. 
Yeah. Like a really small child. Yeah. Like a like a five year old who's asking for an autograph. He just open hand slaps him in the, the only, face. The only thing would be, I guess, like we gotta see him when the pressure gets turned up, when he gets like really if he ever gets on the hot seat right. and he feels the heat that he need it's like a must win game and he loses and maybe get a few of those. Maybe then we'll get to see like a dark side of him, but he just feels like he's too maybe mellow if, and maybe, cool. Maybe it's Coach K's gotta hit John Shire. Where it's yeah. like I expected more out of you. Yeah. Just slaps him. It's like go out or, there. Or K tries to take his job back, and now yeah. Shire has to like fight, fight for, for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He has to be. But a little no, bit he, of a dick. He, then yeah. he was a nice good. guy. Yeah, yeah. and Would I it, don't hate him. If if he if there was like a a young journalist, you know, they usually get like a seven or eight year old that goes to cover the games. If he lectures a young journalist about asking a bad question yeah. after a loss, yeah. yeah, that would really oh, yeah, I would love. But we're, we are we are so far away from that though, yeah. And and this team is like just not. I mean, we talked about it last time, but this team's just like not hateable, and they're playing really well right now. The the thing would be though, um, the ACC stinks. stinks. The ACC stinks. So like you've won nine in a row. Um, we acknowledge that. We tip our cap, but also. How good is Duke? I don't. I don't know. I still. I'm at. I'm at. Uh, what did I say, Jake, on the show? Six, four and a half, somewhere between four and a half and six. I can't remember on my Duke panic meter that they're. Yeah, I think it was like four and a half. Yeah. I but we all. I'm like yeah. four and a half. that Duke is going to make a Here, final four. Here's the thing. Ten. I, as a joke, well, actually, maybe a little bit of me wants John Shire to win this just because it would be funny to do that narrative. But then you also have to remember that. Those are Duke fans that would like die for Coach K. Yeah, and those people would be happy, and you can't allow that. There are more uh, Duke fans who were fed up with K by the end than I know. Oh, there were really good Germans too. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There were there were a lot of people. I remember being in New Orleans that I had Duke people like don't don't. Don't share this publicly. Oh, see, I, share this publicly, I remember. But I, handing, but I, I'm over this man. I remember handing that card to a few Duke. No, fans, I'm saying they're like this stuff happened. I never knew this. They didn't teach us. Us is in the I, history books. I'm not saying a majority. I'm just saying there was there was a silent minority. You are doing just, the really good Germans. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> there were a few really good Germans. They yeah. were just doing their jobs. Yeah. Um, I I I will say about Duke though. Uh, Oral Roberts is the best 12 seed. Yes. And, and that's that's a horrible matchup to start. Um. That I I wrote down on my little manifesto I put together before the bracket. This came is the out. first time somebody's had a manifesto and hasn't bombed somebody. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's next up. I wait, think what you're just talking about is a blog. Actually, wait a to manifesto see what happens. With, murder. Wait to see what happens with my bracket, and we might we might <laughs> we might go down that path. Uh I I wrote down before the bracket even came out that no matter what happens, make sure you have Oral Roberts win at least one game. They and didn't then, lose in conference uh, play. Then, yeah, they yeah. ran the table. They, they, they shoot threes. They shoot a ton of day. threes. They don't turn the ball over. They have a guard who's been there before, Max Acemas. This team is way better than the 15 seed that won um, that, that won a game against they beat? Uh, Florida. They beat Florida and then almost beat Arkansas. Mm -hmm. in the, in the Are league. you sure about that? Yeah. They did, right, Jake? Am I wrong? Jake, am I wrong? They beat Florida. What you said is factually That's correct. All, okay. However, cut his mic. Cut his mic. Who did they beat? Who they, beat they, that? they beat Florida. Who did they beat in the first round? They beat, they beat you Florida. lost as oh, a two Ohio seed? seed? You were a two seed? Oh, no. To Oral? Damn. Yeah, PFT, your puns are back for yeah, this PFT week. PFT had a lot yeah, yeah. I, I emptied the clip on that one. Play the yeah. hits the next week. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You're you big. Maybe spit out my drink if they win this game. <laughs> uh, anyway, this team is better than that team. Like uh, This team is miles better than that team, I think. All um, right. So now, actually, I'm – So I'm, it is also – like Remember that stretch when, when Duke was losing in, in – like, what was it, Lehigh? Did Lehigh beat Duke? The, yeah, yeah, Lehigh, Lehigh beat CJ Duke. McCollum, yeah. yeah, yeah, CJ McCollum. Yeah, like those – it would be fun to go back to that too. And I, maybe then I'll just – listen, anyone who listens to this show knows that – oh, they're, they're revealing the NIT. Oh, Wisconsin's a three seed. Look at that. <laughs> Huge, great is, draw for us. This is old oh, Bradley, Bradley out of the Missouri Valley. Great draw. They won the Missouri Valley. They're very good. This great is a, draw. This is a stacked NIT right now. No UNC cowards. Nova still has not been selected. Oh, yet. no, This could be Nova. Max. This could be Nova, Max. <laughs> Max versus oh, Big no. Cat in IT Sweet 16? Three, we're not beating Bradley. No <laughs> chance. No chance. Well, I will stream this Wisconsin-Bradley game because I think it's going on at the same time as Mississippi State game. Yeah, it is. On Tuesday night. So, uh, what, what, what I was going to say was oh, that oh, Liberty, Liberty. I will, anyone who listens to the show knows that we can. Uh, oh, it is oh, Nova. Nova, Nova Liberty. Let's go. He's up, baby. Let's go. Oh, wow. well, I want you. So, that game would be you. in Madison. Yeah. Wow. That is true. Liberty, ironically, is going dancing. Yes. <laughs> For um, first time in school history. The uh, What I was going to say was the uh, those Duke teams that, like, fumbled 
I will now be like, yeah, this is actually Coach K. I'm putting – if they lose to Oral Roberts, I'll put that on Coach K. You should. It's Coach K. We, we can change on a dime here. He recruited those guys, takes. didn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah. The bottom line so is – So I'm in a win-win situation. If John Shire wins a natty, then it just proves that Coach K completely lost it at the end. Right. Duke's better off without him. Now, if they lose early, then it's Coach K's fault for recruiting such shitty players. Yes. John Shire inherited a terrible situation. Yeah. Yeah. Coach K he did the, the best that he could. Bear. Yeah. Uh, with the number one recruiting class in the country. <laughs> big big question for you here, Titus. Yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. If they lose in the first round, Coach Coach Kilipari, Coach Kil- Cal- Calipari. Coach Jim Calipari. Mm-hmm. Officially, hot seat city. Hot seat city. Yeah, I think. I think. Uh, I. I really. If you're a fan of off season content, uh, and I, I know you guys definitely are, as it pertains to the uh, to Big Blue Nation. Uh, I I cannot imagine what will transpire if John Calipari loses in the first round. Yeah. Football this school. Year. Yeah. yeah oh my fish- god. I think that's what it is. It's like if they lose in the first round. Kentucky's but there's also officially a football there's school. also this Providence Bryce Hopkins is Providence's best player revenge game he transferred from Kentucky because yes. he was getting he wasn't getting enough minutes mm-hmm. and he was mad at Cal like, I don't know it would, I'm sure he, he was uh, you know took the high road when he left but the writing was on the wall he wanted more minutes he's like I deserve to be playing I'm gonna go to Providence he's killing it for Providence if he beats Kentucky and yeah. Big Blue Nation has to watch a guy who was a Wildcat beat their team and knock him out of the first round yet again. That's juicy. Yeah, That's juicy just tell, yeah the Bryce concert. Hopkins revenge game. We have two revenge we, games at this bottom part because if Michigan State, if it holds serve at the bottom, Michigan State and Marquette, we get the Joey Hauser yep, revenge yep, game. That's right. That's which right. Which will be the Hauser should have gone to Wisconsin. Whatever. That's not a big deal. I did slide into their GMs being like, what's up, guys? Come to Madison. <laughs> I'm not a shit. Has that ever worked? What's the most nope. successful? Caleb Williams, I, I struck out on pretty hard. <laughs> Caleb Williams. <yeah. laughs> that one was pretty bad. But yeah, the, the Bryce Hopkins You did convince game. Brad Davison to return to school. Again. That's true. That That's true. Bad. I did that. Um, yeah, I. this is a fun region. I'm very excited. Like, I know, listen, Purdue, maybe they maybe they have the miracle run in them. But well, Marquette's very good. USC's actually really like USC's, USC's better than, yes. than I think people realize. Yes. Uh, Drew Peterson and Boogie Not the murderer. Is, yeah. yeah no, Gotta just say that. He's a stoolie. Not uh, the murderer is, is a stoolie. The players. <laughs> all right. Stoolie. All right. Yeah, yeah, there we Confusing go. there for yeah, a second. Yeah. Uh, Jake was creaming his dockers uh, thinking about uh, a world in which. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, what was the Sweet 16 matchup green. he had? Was, so it's in the garden, so obviously it's a hot ticket no matter what. But of course. You're going to tell me Purdue, Duke, Kentucky, Michigan State? Yeah. That, in that, the garden? Those four. Purdue versus Duke, Kentucky, Michigan State Come in on. the garden. Because that region's Why in Madison would, Square Garden. Uh, just to Providence have, would be pretty sick at MSG. Yeah, definitely. And Titus but, was saying but you it, want Marquette, Duke, Marquette going back to the garden after yeah. cutting down the nets there last night. Mm-hmm. But he was saying you have Zach Eady, National Player of the Year. Or Vermont. You have Duke, who is Duke. You have Kentucky, who is Kentucky. And then you have Tom Izzo, Mr. March, in the garden. It like, was just, uh, kinda, he's not, uh, he's not Mr. Know. March anymore. Mr. Who's Mr. March? Jerry. Who's, 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 oh, that's true. Jerry is Mr. Tom, March. Tom Izzo is Mr. Like, early March, mid-March. Yeah. Who would be Mr. March in college basketball? Right well, no, it is, it, it, it's Jerry Fragrance. <laughs> he, he is, he is, he, he said it's January, February, He has February, a shirt out, right? This is I yes, March. Yeah. I am March. No, I don't know who's Mr. March now. That's a good question. I guess Bill Self. If you, I guess it's just whoever. Yeah, but won he's the been high title. seated. Like, who makes? I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll get to him, but if Arkansas made like a deep run, because like, I be, think it, Mr. March has to be. That's you true. have to like, uh, you know, go farther than everyone expects. It's like three or four straight second weekends. Yeah, like right, mm-hmm. right, and also just like be like, oh, I didn't expect them to be. Yeah, one again. or one or two of them have to be unexpected. Yeah, yeah. if Arkansas can Must beat Houston, it could be Mr. Marsh. I mean, if or they don't play Houston. I'm sorry. If we should just Kansas, Kansas. if Duke yeah. wins two games, we should just call John Charles. John Charles, Mr. Marsh. Marsh. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Marsh. Uh, yeah, no, this. Uh, I don't know who I'm taking out of this. Ed region. Cooley might be Mr. March. Yeah, and we didn't even talk about Kansas State. Kansas State's battle tested. Kansas. That's what you got to say if you're a Big Twelve team. Yeah, battle, battle tested. tested. Yeah. What about or or but are they worn down? Is the other question. Uh, <laughs> are they battle point. tested? or Are they worn Damn. down from a? That's a tough one. What about Mr. February? <laughs> Rick <laughs> Barnes. Rick, yeah. Rick Barnes. Mr. Rick February. Barnes. He is in this region. Um, I also wrote that down. I've I've believed in Tennessee one too many times. So Tennessee fans, you'll be delighted to hear that I have completely given up on your team. Um, which means this is probably the year they make the run. Uh. But yeah, I, uh, I I think I think this is Purdue's second round matchup is tough. But in terms of like the caliber of each team, like Marquette's not the best two seed. I don't think they they are playing really well. I have Marquette coming out of this region for what it's worth. Okay. Um, 
I I uh I, I don't think Duke is the best five seed per se. I don't. I mean, I'd have to think about it. I guess they're playing the best right now, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, the, the, it didn't jump out to me, jump off the page of me when I saw like these teams. Tennessee is a four seed. Kansas State is a three. Marquette is a two. I think that's a good spot for Purdue. Um, but they are Purdue, and it has there's a one next to their name, and it's I, it's really Purdue all fans it is. Knows what's coming. Yeah, it's not it, like <laughs> this is not the hardest region. It's just it's Purdue. Duke so. is the best five seed, by the way. I take yeah. that back. They are the best five. I, I yeah, they are. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna take. You know what? I'm going to say fuck it because I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning that you have to have at least one seven plus in the uh, final four. I'm going to take Memphis in this region. Hmm. Well, yeah. And I'm going to look so stupid when they lose in the first round. I got that's my, okay. I got my Boilermakers. Okay. Purdue or die. Okay. There we go. What? Who you got? Oh, you got Marquette. I got Marquette, yeah. Okay. I, t- I took Marquette, which is, is probably dumb, but Marquette has not played great defense for most of the year, and I, I made the mistake of watching them in person against Xavier in the Big East Tournament Championship, and they were their, their defense was incredible. And so now I'm I'm instead of looking at the – how many games have they played? Uh, 34. Instead of looking at the first 33 games, how good they were defensively, I'm looking at the last one and saying they figured it out. Right. And now they know how to guard. Right. Just based off of one game. Yes. Rutgers is a one seed. Record Powerful, more. dangerous, a dangerous one. There we go. When you started by saying I, I failed a cultural test here at Barstool, I thought you were going to say that I, I feel bad for TJ that Rutgers didn't make the yeah, tournament. Yeah, no, whereas, that whereas was I think, also a fail. Yeah, because like, it feels like everyone else is just. No, I was like, TJ, get in here. I want to drink your tears. The, the one, the one, the biggest rule at Barstool is when anyone suffers like terrible, terrible losses on their fandom. Uh, you have to just rub it in as hard as possible. Except for Max. We no, treat him really nice. I think you guys treated me pretty well. <laughs> Shouldn't have got that haircut. Uh, Big Cat, we have a yak battle in the first round of the NIT. Rutgers Stephen Hofstra. Shea. Oh, yeah. Who's Hofstra? Uh, Stephen Shea. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, <laughs> wow. See, no one tells Stephen Shea that Hofstra's in the NIT. He will not know. <laughs> we can yeah, tell that's very, he doesn't, they can he doesn't win know it all. Ba- he doesn't know college basketball as a sport. We, we could, we, he could win it all. Um, all right. Let's go to... Uh, the Midwest the region. Midwest. The Midwest region. Houston's the one seed. Um, I I'm just gonna make a, a quick prediction on Houston because I know Sasser got hurt. Is he? He's gonna be back. He. I, he I was warming up the, today, wasn't he? Groin. I don't know. I I haven't. I I'd, I'd, I'd have to take a look at his groin myself. To I'd have to really get in you there. And get take in a, there. Yeah, we can yeah. arrange that. Um, but yeah, groin injuries can suck. So I don't. I don't know. I mean, I I assume he'll be back for. The Sweet 16 if they make it, but... Yeah, I, my, my main point, even if he's not back, Houston, what does it say? Probable. Probable. He's probable for the Houston, first round. And they do game. need him to go to, to uh, you know, Final Four. But yeah. this first two games for Houston, Houston is a team, they just got embarrassed by Memphis. Houston, when they get embarrassed, they take it out so hard. Yeah. On, like, the game against... Um, who do they play in the... Th- uh Fuck. The quarterfinals uh, the other day that they kind of struggled. Was it ECU? ECU. They struggled a little bit with ECU. I mean, not like they were a 23-point favorite. I think they won by 10. They then came out the next day and just embarrassed Cincinnati. I think Houston is going to steamroll Northern Kentucky, duh. But then Iowa or Auburn are both going to get steamrolled. Either one. Houston, just a reminder, Houston is the team that Kellen Sampson for – long ex- uh, periods of time in their practice puts a bubble on the rim so they just rebound. Yeah. You literally he puts a lid on the rim and they just rebound. That's all they do. Um to your point, I I think this is a great draw for Houston in the sense of like if they are the professional uh team that I I think that they are, which is to say they have like upperclassmen, they have a culture of like toughness and we're just going to come out and uh-huh. beat your ass. Um if they are that Iowa or Auburn in the second round are both great, oh. ma- great for them to just oh. cut, like chew them up and spit them out mm-hmm. and and keep it moving. Um, I I I think Houston. I've thought Houston was the best team for most of the season. Uh, Bama beating Houston at Houston. Um, I don't know. It gives me pause a little bit. Sa- it's basically the Sasser's growing. Like if yeah. I knew Sasser was fully healthy, I might have picked Houston to win it all. Um, but I, I got to take a look at that groin. I need to get in there. You got to get in the groin. By the way, this Iowa Auburn game. I don't want to get anyone too excited, but uh, we have an Elvis bet. We have an Elvis bet. Uh, Iowa Elvis and Auburn Elvis are making a bet. What does that mean? Uh, they're both both teams fan bases have a, have a guy dresses up like Elvis. Dress, like dressed that. in Elvis. So Viva March Madness, <laughs> they released an official statement. 
Iowa Elvis versus <laughs> Auburn Elvis. If Iowa wins, Auburn Elvis will make a donation to the U of I Children's Hospital, uh, matching the Hawkeyes point total from the game. What? So you know, well, like sixty dollars? Yeah. I well, if Iowa wins, oh yeah, if Iowa wins, they'll probably score like eighty. But if Auburn prevails, Hawkeye Elvis will do the same for the Children's Hospital of Alabama. It's it's, it's how much money? Whatever they score in the game. That's such a weak bet. That's such a weak wanna, bet. I don't want to unit shame here, but <laughs> I just love the no, you, you can if it's like a, a seventy dollar. You're bet. gonna donate seventy dollars. I just You're the love, fucking king of rock and roll. I love that they had this bet released within an hour of the bracket being out because it's like I would imagine the Elvis fan bases, like the Elvis community, they're all in touch with each other. He's like, oh shit, my friend from from there Iowa was a, City. There was a group I got chat. An Elvis there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They had a group chat that if two of us play, let's yeah. have a bet. First. Utah State Elvis mm-hmm. is like shit. <laughs> I don't have a fucking Elvis to go up against, but yeah, watch out. The, the Elvis, Iowa Elvis versus Auburn Elvis is going to be crazy. I love that. If they were if they were any sort of Elvis whatsoever, they would just bet that the loser had to die on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, after the game, or just yeah, just sit on the toilet until you die. Get addicted to opioids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but it's yeah, maybe not that one. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say <laughs> I saw the picture of them. I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, yeah, this game though this is a bad matchup for Iowa simply because they've been horrendous on the road, and this game's being played in Alabama. Oh, it is. That's yeah. right, Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. I so it's even, gonna I be all Auburn that. fans. Yeah, like that's that that's that. And also, it is an away game. For it's them. horrendous for Iowa because Fran McCaffrey's still their coach. Yeah, and um, doesn't get enough credit for never being in the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he does not get enough credit for that? I'm giving him credit right now for never being to a Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> what about what about Texas A and M? We were saying earlier how it sucks that they got jobbed in their seating, but got, we but we instantly jobbed. moved on past that once we saw the potential second round matchup against Texas. Yeah. Uh, too fun. I mean, Penn State will be a fun game. That's that that's why it sucks that they got jobbed in their seating because to have to play Penn State team that's been playing really well uh, is sort of unfair to Texas A and M. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, all that whole bottom region, even if. If you want to take a big swing on a 15, now I think Texas, I have Texas going to the national championship and losing to Bama. Whoa. So I'm not condoning picking Colgate to beat Texas, but don't, Colgate. Don't. I'm not, I'm saying, I'm saying that whole bottom four in terms of fun. Like Colgate plays a fun, aesthetically pleasing style of basketball. But that's all I'm saying. They're not going to beat Texas. That's they're not what not, I'm saying. I, Colgate last year, I, I did the Colgate thing because they played Wisconsin That's, Dude, first it's round. literally in my manifesto. Yeah. Do not do yeah. not believe in Colgate okay, again. Right. Because everyone's like, look at, their, look at their shooting, and they have no, all no, these no. guys don't make mistakes. They got to a point in the game against Wisconsin, which is hard to do, where all of our athletes, and I use that with air quotes, looked 10 times better, and they looked like they I'm, all were wearing cement shoes. Texas is going to I'm not obliterate. saying pick Colgate to win. I'm saying... In terms of that, four, those two fun games, teams, fun teams. the two games, Texas A&M, Penn State, and then Texas Colgate will be two fun games to watch. Texas will probably be in a comfortable lead the whole game, but you'll Colgate will be fun. They're, they're a team you'll want to root. Sounds for, like we have to make a legacy bet. Texas is gonna murder them. I, I think Texas will. I think Texas will. But murder But PFT's them. right. Texas, Texas A&M will be awesome. It's it will be, be great, awesome. A that's great a, game. That's a uh, Big Twelve, no, an SEC, SEC revenge Old, game. Yeah, yeah. Is but it, now but it's, it's not, not SEC yet. But it's not. Is it does Texas A and M get revenge on Texas because now Texas has joined Texas A and M? I think it's a civil war. Yeah, it's just civil. It's war. a house it's divided. House, yeah. yeah, they should actually s- wait and play this game on Thanksgiving. Oh my God! Yes, I would love pause that. the whole tournament. That would that would be <laughs> that would be that would, it's going to be a fun game. The two guard oriented teams that that play great defense. We and, also yeah. we we have some other revenge games in this bracket, uh, depending on how Luke. Because this is really all that. Like the media does in March Madness, like look at this revenge game. Uh, I don't know if this is a revenge game or just a homecoming game, but Sean Miller, if he beats Mississippi State uh, and Xavier wins, Sean Miller did play at at Pitt, so uh, that maybe that is that a revenge game? He can play, he can play his alma mater. He, he's yeah. from Pennsylvania. He played yeah. at Pitt. He plays alma mater. I don't know if that does that count as a what is that. It's just a story that's just a, game. Yeah, that's just a factoid game, I think. That's a, yeah. You know what that is? That's, that's an interesting nugget. That's an yeah, interesting it's a nugget. That's a nugget, <laughs> that's a nugget, nugget game. game. And then, well, you, you just kind of threw out Iowa State there. No, I know. I'm saying, yeah, they, Pitt has to win two games. They got to win two games. They got to have to beat Mississippi State. Listen, we had Joey Hauser already playing his second round game revenge game. So. Little, little nugget. I have a nugget on Iowa State. Mm-hmm. That their strength of schedule, their opponent's offense has been number one in the country. Yeah, Big Twelve over the course battle of the tested. battle tested team. Battle tested. Battle tested. Battle tested. Do you think? Do you think T.J. Otzelberger? I asked this on the live stream, but I 
we move past him pretty quickly. Is he jacked or is he just wear tight clothing? I think he's mini jacked. Okay. Because he's not a tall guy. Maybe he is tall. I don't, tall he doesn't look he? that he tall. He doesn't look that tall. He doesn't look that tall. I also but am he, respecting Iowa State because this is a lot of, you know, the number one rule in sports and gambling, everything is like past uh, doesn't, what is the, what's the actual saying? I need a line. Past performance past, is not indicative it, it, of future it, it, results. results. Right. <laughs> there it is. Iowa State beat Wisconsin this year, last year in the tournament, so I respect Iowa State from that. It means nothing. Yeah. But this is just how my brain works. I think TJ Otzelberger, his hair is too nice to be jacked. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Unless he's got that like Oregon strength coach vibe to him. You remember yeah. the one with the mustache? Yeah, he's at Miami. Are now. you saying yeah. that the only way to to really be a jacked man is to have a thin awful hair, hair, like awful, terrible like, hair? You're yeah, because you have to overcompensate. Yeah. yeah, shaved head, yeah. Goatee, yeah. goatee, because yeah. you're going bald, and yeah. then you you wear polo shirts that are super super tight. Yeah. Some really bad tragedy in your childhood. Yeah. They'd be like, I'm gonna get so jacked, no one can pick on me you're, anymore. You're yeah. Young adult life, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Something happened where you're like, I'm spending my whole life in the gym, and then you move thousands of miles away from home to live by the beach or something. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, well, you I didn't get you. jacked; I, yeah. you got emaciated. I was talking. You're the first person who did the fucking insulin medicine without. Doping. I did the yeah. I did the opposite of. <laughs> I, I thought we were. I thought we were going a different path. With, uh, <laughs> never mind. What about your uh, your beloved Hoosiers? Um. Revenge game, uh, Indiana Houston in the Sweet 16. Uh, Kelvin Sampson versus the program that he sank yes. on the way out. Um, yep. would, yes. be, would be a juicy storyline to be sure. Um, I see this is why this is why I hate filling out brackets because before the bracket came out, I wrote down advance Kent State no matter who they play. And then they played Indiana and I was like, what do I do? Um, mm. And I had to stick with it because mm. so I have Kent State beating Indiana, uh, but I hate that. I definitely hate that, and and I just want to crawl into a hole because uh, <laughs> Kent State's really I'm, good, and Kent sincere State is carry good. is a really fun March name to say. Kent, yeah, like that is it when I when you think in storyline, think, think of an announcer saying sincere carry from three. Yeah, with a name That's like fun. that, he's destined to play in the NBA. Am I right? Yeah, he's <laughs> a, he's a, when we're when we're on fucking season five hundred and forty third of the dozen, yeah. there will be a sincere carry yes. question who um, led the MAC in points in like twenty twenty three. Uh, I don't even know if he did. They also Kent State is a a muck it up team is, is how I've described them. They they played a game against Houston. If I remember right, the score is like forty five to forty three or something. Yeah, forty. Yeah, yeah, it was just disgusting basketball. Um, and I think that that Indiana played a brand. So Indiana before Mike Woodson got there with Trace Jackson Davis and some of the other guys are still there. They played a brand of basketball that was muck. And I think there's a world where Kent State. Like invites them back into the muck, Ooh. and they like just revert back to their old ways, and suddenly they're playing Archie Miller basketball. Oh no! Yeah, and it's just a gross basketball game. That's just like, yeah, it, that Indiana fans are losing their minds. Like, how did we get here? Um, I don't know. That's I that's, got, that's one timeline I see. I got a deep deep revenge game on this one. Um, Chris Payton, who plays for Kent State, who might be guarding T T J D for a little bit in this game or most of it. Uh, he played at Pitt. He's from Bloomington. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Revenge game against the Revenge entire town. Game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. What about what about Texas coach uh, Terry? Yeah, Rodney Terry. Rodney yeah. Terry. Uh, I've I've read a lot of stuff about him recently because they're going to have to determine at some point yeah. if he's going to come back or he's if, from Bloomington, or, Illinois. So it's not actually. Oh, it's not a different, different <laughs> Bloomington. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but with Terry, uh, how many games does he have to win? For him to be the I think, presumptive guy coming into next year. I think there's an argument to be made he should be the guy already. Um, I don't think Texas is going to see it that way. I think he's going to have to go to the Final Four for them to actually hire him. Um, and I think he could. But the 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 te Texas is in a position – like Chris Beard was such the perfect hire for them. Like when they hired him, they were like, we got our guy for the next 30 years. He's going to be here for 30 years, and then he was not. And so I think like they're in a position where they want to take a big – Big All swing, right. yeah. 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 Big swing. Hope hope they don't choke. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Texas. I walked right into that. If they choke, uh, they'll take a big swing. Yeah, we, we a, saying, they want to take a big swing on their next coaching hire. If you're looking for the the inverse of uh, the Alabama storyline, Texas would be it, where they got rid of the bad guy. Yes, and then they go on a miracle run. Yes, mm -hmm. and they're a program that um, I was talking to to Steve on my Stanford Steve on my show about like how I I was trying to make an argument that Ohio State basketball is actually fun to cheer for if you can just remove the football part of it. Um, but nobody can. I think Texas basketball is kind of the same thing. Like, there's no real reason to hate Texas basketball. They right. never win anything. They right. always choke. 
Um, they had Kevin Durant and they didn't do they anything. They never do anything. Yeah. So there is like some small part that's like, yeah, I get you hate the fan base because they're so loud and like they think that they're the best and they never win anything. Like I get all but if you just like cut out all of the that and just focus on like the group inside the Texas basketball locker room, they're never they've never elevated themselves to hateable in my eyes because they never like actually do, win do you anything. know what it is? So. It's it's very similar to when LeBron was in Cleveland separating the Cavs and LeBron from Browns fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause like, I was like, I root for the Browns fans, not like thinking in my head. Oh yeah. These are also LeBron. Fans. These are the like, same people Texas that are football yeah. and basketball. You got to separate them. Also. I mean like TJ Ford, who didn't love him. Yes. But, th but that's what happens is as, as Texas basketball starts winning, you realize the same people that are happy about right. this. Right. Are those assholes that I deal with in the fall, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and yeah, so then you're like, never mind. Hey, I hate these guys. Yeah, it's similar to the the John Shire like Duke fan. Like I'm rooting for John Shire, and then I'm like, wait, Duke fans. But then Duke fans title? are gonna be happy. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Exactly. What did I do to I, myself? I do need to see McConaughey back on the bench. Yeah. That would be Slapping awesome. Asses. Come on. Like you, many people, many national pundits are expecting Texas to make the Final Four this year. Yeah, I have them. I have them in Mark the championship. Titus. Yeah. I in do. the championship. I now's the time when you need to come out of hiding, McConaughey. I also, think so. Shout out uh, in this region, uh, Jim Larinig in Miami. I just love him. He's awesome. Yeah, I don't love. I don't love that he goes by Coach L. I think that's. A bad that's oh yeah, come on. You have the you have the you have yeah. the Inye. Yeah, that's a, you should you should ride with that. You should be Coach Inye. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's such All, a cooler letter. Tilde, also, tilde. Is it called a tilde? Inye. What's, what you, What's the tilde? I think it's a tilde. Inye. In, Inye is the squiggly yeah, over the end. Yeah, it's a tilde yeah. in English. It's an oh, Inye in Spanish. Yeah. All right. We also have a wild. Storyline for Drake. Their head coach is Darren DeVries. His son, Tucker DeVries, is the conference player of the year. Wow. That's wild. That is wild. That's so wild. how did he recruit him? I don't know. Did he give Damn. him any free meals in, in high school, middle school? Maybe. It's a problem. Violation. Let's I'm going to write in. NIL. Yeah. Let's Wouldn't be the first time. Down. Free clothes and a bedroom and a place to stay. Wouldn't yeah. be the first time Drake groomed somebody. Ooh. We also too easy. We, we forgot uh, to mention the uh, Bruce Pearl storyline that he was at Iowa. When he uh, was a rat. When he ratted on Illinois. Oh, he wore the yeah. wire. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, was he wore the wire. He was, yeah. he was coaching at Iowa. Yeah. Forgot about that. So, yeah. So, uh, so the the Iowa Elvis and Auburn Elvis. <laughs> do with that what you may. Uh, well, who do you got coming out? I have Texas, as I said, because uh, Texas is depth. Texas plays defense. Texas is battle test in the Big Twelve. Texas has uh, a bevy of. Uh, a, uh, uh, that's not their mascot, is it? Bevo. No, Bevo. Bevo. Yeah, yeah, you're Bevo. I, I, Bevo. I just tripped myself up. Uh, a bevy of guards. Uh, they 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 have they check a lot of the boxes and they're playing really well right now. Um, so I I have Houston and Texas. Uh, I, I think it's going to go chalk in that regard in the Elite Eight, and then it's kind of a coin flip. And I went with Texas because I don't know what Marcus Sasser's growing looks like. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Gotta see it. I gotta see it. I still haven't see it. seen it. See your groin. I still, you know what? I'm you should, a, Mark, you should tweet at him. Yeah. Let me see your let, groin. Let me see yeah. your groin. We get a pick. I need to yeah. see what the bruising looks like right now. Um, before. I'm gonna join you. I'm join you with Texas. Yeah. Until you see that groin. Until I see the groin. If Marcus Sasser is 100 percent healthy, I would like Houston. But yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm know. also kind of weirdly rooting for Indiana to make a deep run. It and I do nice. love watching TJD play basketball. Yeah. He is fun. No, I think Indiana could. I think Indiana, um, uh, Jalen Hood Shafino will be a lottery pick probably, and and uh, they don't. I don't think they play good enough defense, and they're certainly not consistent enough. But um, Indiana on their best night can beat anybody. I mean, they they smoked Purdue in Mackey Arena. Yeah, and swept um, them first time in like ten them, yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like A and M to beat Texas. Ooh, Coach Buzz ride with their guy a little bit. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go chalk out of this region. I'm gonna go Houston. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. That checks out. Um, last region, this is the death region of death, the West. Yeah. Uh, so when we were doing our bracket reveal show, I, I said, this looks like the region of death. I went back and looked in this region. You have five teams that are in the top 11 in Ken Palm, which is pretty crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. And not only that, but the number one seed is the fourth ranked team of those five in the, in the, in Ken Palm. So UCLA is number two in Ken Palm. They're the two seed. UConn is number four in Ken Palm. They are the four seed. Gonzaga is number eight in Ken Palm. They are the three seed. And then Kansas is number nine in Ken Palm. They are the one seed. And so St. Mary's is up there, St. Mary's yeah. is 11. Yeah. And Arkansas is 20. So you have six in the top 20. This is this entire region. And then we didn't even mention TCU, which 
like when when I was looking at the bracket reveal, I was like, every team, there's six teams in this region that their ceiling is is Final Four national championship. Yeah, TCU came into this season saying we are we expect to make the Final Four because they they last year, if you remember, took Arizona, who was the number one overall seed in last year's tournament, to overtime. There was a controversial call that wasn't actually controversial at all, but everyone lost their minds um, on an over and back call. But that was when like we got introduced. That's when like America was introduced to TCU, and then they brought all those guys back. Um, no Eddie Lampkin though. You love Eddie Lampkin. I love Eddie. You Lampkin. you've always loved Eddie Lampkin. I love Eddie. He, left he was the team. in the office uh, a few months ago. He was. You could probably get love him in the Eddie office Lampkin. now because he left the team. Yeah, he did. <laughs> He's got nothing team. going he on did. right now. Why did he leave? I don't know. Uh, well, so little bit of injury then also his mom came out and said that uh there was maybe some racial things said by jamie dixon so we don't know okay yeah but he left the team somewhere in between i can tell from the well yeah well, was, we I, don't I just asked a question yeah. i don't want to know the answer yeah we don't know somewhere don't in know. between like a mild injury and racial Ra- slurs yeah being right <laughs> yeah somewhere okay, got in it. there got it fill in the blanks yeah yeah somewhere so he yeah he's he's not there but there is um yeah, this is an incredible region. Like I'm this, very excited about all these games. I, I will co-sign that and say uh, look no further than just the Arkansas-Illinois game, having two teams that uh, have just loads and loads of talent and, and on paper jump out at you at how good they could be theoretically if they could just put it all together. Neither team has really done that fully yet, but you could talk yourself into it. Uh, and that's the 8-9 game. So, like, honestly, this is it's a cop-out. I understand, and people are, people get angry when I do this, when I do like the anything could happen type shit. But Illinois, Illinois is good enough to make the Final Four. They're not mm-hmm. going to. They're not. They're they're going to find a way to 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 screw it up. But if you've been watching Illinois all year and you only focus on like their positive flashes mm-hmm. yeah. of basketball, you're yeah. like that team is good enough to to make a Final Four. Same with Arkansas. They're they're loaded uh, with talent. I think um, that's gonna be a rock fight. It's by gonna the way. be. It's gonna. I think be it's in, gonna be like uh, very. That might be my under of the of of the month. I just you just you have no idea which one of those teams is gonna show up. Uh, and if they whoever wins, you don't know who's gonna show up against Kansas. It's just, but but that's what makes that region crazy. Is like if you're Kansas, you could you could get the shitty version of Illinois, run them off the floor, and it's a ho hum second round game. Or you could get. You know, like an Arkansas team that's got multiple lottery picks yeah. and a ton of athleticism, and you're like, well, I thought and we were I March. Th- yeah, and I thought we were one seed. How the hell did we? Yeah, get this draw. So you know who I want to show up to this game? Burt Bielema. Yeah, yeah, revenge yeah. game. Yeah, Burt Bielema. I would for love. Sure. I would like him to do like a topless red panda at halftime. There should be a Burt, There should be an Arkansas <laughs> Burt Bielema versus Illinois Burt Bielema yeah. bet that yeah. we have on this. It one. is a revenge game for him. Loser has to eat. 70 pounds of red meat <laughs> yeah. after the game. We need it. We need it. Um, and we have, speaking of revenge games, if uh, Illinois gets to the second round and Bill Self, that is obviously Bill Self, Bill coach Self, of Illinois, yeah. uh, his guys went, you know, that was a famous team that went to the national championship game. So I don't know if that's even revenge because that felt, hey, who's, we just say revenge game. Just, if yeah. someone has any ties to the other team. Who's mad at who? I think <laughs> Illinois probably would be a little mad, but then also who like, wouldn't take Kansas' job over Illinois? Yeah, like, they'd no be like, th- thank you for taking us to a national championship. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, Bruce Weber did, but yeah, he's, his guys. His guys. His guys that he recruited. Cl- and then, Cl- uh, Cliff Alexander revenge game, by the way. There we go. Remember that? Cliff Re- Alexander, that? You know yes, that video, yes, though. yes. Oh, my God. Um, we also have maybe I, if CBS, TBS, whoever this game's on, Knows what they're doing as broadcasters. I own a UConn. Mm-hmm. We need it to yeah. just, just don't even show the game. Just show Dan Hurley and Rick Pitino yeah. mm-hmm. just in their coaches' boxes, like just going. They should have an nuts. alternate feed. Yes, yeah, coaches I'd watch only. All. Yep. I, yes, absolutely. I, I did a personal Rick. alternate feed at the Big East tournament for Hurley versus Shaka the other night. I just watched them. Shaka the was whole on game. the court. Shaka <laughs> yeah. was on. And the did court. you see he blew he me off post game? No. What did he do? I said, "Good game, coach." He just walks right past me. Shaka Respect was biz, Shaka. chip on my shoulder. Marquette versus Sh- Vermont. Yeah, Shaka literally was on the court. It was driving me insane. But either way, I I, I well, was Rick, joking. If Rick's in the box, he'll only be in there for a few seconds. Yes, yes, uh, fifteen. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, you're, if, if if there was a stream of Rick Pitino and Dan Hurley, and they were mic'd up, and and they were we got like a genuine mic'd up experience, and like not that they knew they were mic'd up, yeah. you just get to hear whatever they would have said otherwise. And you can either watch that stream or watch the actual game. 
I would watch that stream. Yes. I would watch yes. that stream and check the score later. Absolutely. After the yeah. And just judge by their facial just, expressions. Yes. Yeah. I, I was saying that the the ref, if they know what they're doing, they should just give a T to both of them before they even tip it off. <laughs> Preemptive, And be yeah. like, I know what you guys are going to say. Yeah, so I mean. here's your technical. If Rick Pitino wins this game, I think that we're definitely going to get Rick at, at a big school next well, year. Well, that's the best part about this is this could be something we get twice a year because mm -hmm. Rick Pitino going to St. John's, Rick Pitino going to Georgetown. Georgetown. I even heard... Ed Cooley going to Georgetown, Rick yeah. Pitino going to Providence. There's all types mm -hmm. of Rick Pitino fanfic. Well, I, I, I like there. that. Yeah, I, he's I going actually, home. Yeah, I, I actually think Leroy broke the Ed Cooley at Georgetown. That he might have been a little bit over his skis on Got that it. one. Got might it. have been some bad rumors. Ed going Cooley on. loves Providence. He does love Providence, but he also likes money. Yeah, is the thing. Yeah, so everyone likes money. I I do. I I like that fan fiction though. Like yeah, yeah Ed Cooley to Georgetown, Rick Pitino. Go to Providence. He's going home. Run it back. Where he started, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's interesting. I, I would love to see Rick advance to the second round here. Rick but, Pitino against St. Mary's second round. Oh, I, I think VCU. What if, what so if Rick I think goes VCU on a little run here? Be, I think VCU is going to be a tough, tough game for St. Mary's. Big Kai, I mentioned this on the show, or Titus the show. VCU revenge game against COVID. They forfeited the last time they were in yeah. the tournament. Oh, yeah. That's I can't trust VCU. Oregon though. won oh, yeah. via forfeit. I can't so, I can't trust VCU until I see a mask up. I need a picture of the guys uh, taking COVID seriously this time around. Yeah, because they last time too many positive tests. That's Thank true. You season. So which coach I was it to... in 2021 that he had a, a massive Josh herpes uh, outbreak? Uh, oh. I thought oh. you were gonna say Josh pa uh, Pastner. Josh with Pastner the, with the mask. He, he no, just got no, fired. No. There, there was herpes one coach outbreak. that had a massive herpes outbreak, and they all had to wear masks. But for whatever reason, this one coach <laughs> kept pulling his down. It's like, dude, you have the best built-in excuse. Well, it's remember. a once-in-a-generation pandemic. No one has to know. I don't remember. I don't remember that I either. I don't remember. Dang, I know what you're watch. talking about. Yeah. I don't. Oh, I do know what you're talking about, off. but I don't remember. Who's the coach with herpes? Oh, oh it was Fred Hoiberg. Oh, Hoy okay. was Fred. Fred well, no, during, no, no, everyone no. thought he had COVID, right? Fred, oh, Fred was one who was very, very sick. Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking. He had, like, the flu. Remember, Dude, he was like watch, sweating on the sideline. Everyone's watching that, like throw this man in prison. Yeah, like how dare yeah. him? And then he didn't have COVID. It's just the flu. It's just <laughs> that's what you're gonna say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, this this region and Gonzaga. We didn't even talk about Gonzaga. Gonzaga that as Grand a, Canyon games. Gonzaga awesome. as a three seed with zero pressure whatsoever um, is is very very dangerous. And I, I, for whatever reason, America hates Gonzaga, and everybody loves to to roll their eyes at the idea of Gonzaga. The Gonzaga's won seven, or gone to seven straight Sweet Sixteens. They're, he's they're, Mr. March. He's Mr. March. Mark Few might be Mr. March. He's never been to a Final Four. Um, <laughs> yeah, he uh. So Gonzaga is a three seed where there's no target on their back whatsoever, and nobody's expect. I mean, I've I've kind of at times probably. I've probably said this multiple times that I hate this Gonzaga team. I don't hate them anymore. They're starting to play a little bit better lately. Their their offense is is really humming. Um, but yeah, the, the all season long, it's been clear that this is not one of Mark Few's best teams, and that kind of makes them dangerous. That they mm -hmm. they can just let it rip and have Drew Timmy just you know yeah be be the All American that he is. We are. I feel like we are destined to see Drew Timmy at least in a, a yeah. Sweet Sixteen game this yes. year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, just a reminder: don't root for Northwestern because a bunch of like journalists are going to come out of nowhere. Be annoying. And just be so fucking yeah, annoying. very annoying. I called my shot on a graphic that CVS is going to do. <sighs> Northwestern kid crying, then and now. They're oh, going to yeah, show him live in the stands. Oh, the yeah. meme, the AD yeah. son. Yeah, they're going to show him. Yeah, six years later. Yeah, he's like 25 years old now. Yeah. yeah. He's, I hope he's crying again. He probably will be. He's Northwestern yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Although no, it, but it would be nice to see Greeny advance. No, but Ravel? Two, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, that's you can't. True. You can't have Ravel like... He can't have anything nice. He took the polo off the uh, off of Colin's uh, body uh, it, when they won at Rutgers. <laughs> he literally was like, on his Instagram feed, he was like, got the game-worn polo from Coach Collins. <laughs> Fucking we'll, crazy! We'll get, can't uh, have it. We can't have. We'll it. get Wilbon on PTI wearing a little purple yeah, no, uh, quarter zip, like yeah, I mean, a quarter zip with like ten. You can't uh, like have it. Of purple. Can't yeah, yeah, something like, like a small piece of flare. Small, yeah. It'll be a polo shirt that he has underneath his quarter zip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll be a Northwestern. You can't <laughs> yeah. even see the logo on it. Can't have it. Yeah. Can't Tony, have it. my wild guy. <laughs> Northwestern just oh, they play an ugly style of basketball. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, they, counterpoint: Boo Booey, fun to say. Boo Booey is fun to say. That's fun to say. Yeah. Don't uh, you can't you can't have that. Um, and, all then, right. and then UCLA. If yeah. Jalen Clark was healthy, he's not. Obviously. Yeah, that's on Max. 
Yeah, thank you, Max, Max for that. Max tore his Achilles. Is it officially torn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's torn. It was that. torn the second we saw the video. <sighs> that's if, not true. Yes, it was. We didn't see the MRI. No, no, actually, that's technically true, Max, because he tore his Achilles, and I said the second we saw the video, he tore his Achilles. But we didn't know. But we did but it because was torn. his Achilles was torn. It was, it was torn. We just found out. You're wrong. Yeah. His Achilles was torn. His you're Achilles. Ju- you're li- jumping to conclusions. His, no, I, it, I was called, not. It's called being right if you were right about it. Yeah, and his Achilles was <laughs> torn. The minute it was torn, it I said now it was torn. torn. No, it, just, <laughs> it got torn at the hospital. <laughs> Imagine if he torn in the MRI machine. Yeah, it wasn't torn. Uh, was it, look what? at this. You should do screenshots, Max. Like, look at this. It's clearly intact when he was being wheelchaired <laughs> off the court. <laughs> I'll do my. I'll do some research. Yeah, please I'll do. Conduct, I'll conduct my own research. Uh, well, if if he was healthy, I think I said on the show with Jake. Uh, if he was healthy, I would have wrote UCLA's national champion and filled my bracket out backwards. It was yeah, a good pick. UCLA was was, was, was a good pick until you, was. Tore, until you tore Jalen Clark's um, Achilles. So I don't know how good they are now. I mean, they they played Arizona well. They had a shot to beat them in the the tournament. Um, championship. They, they have they're, Mr. They're March, still, Mick Cronin. They do have Mr. March. Yeah. Did you see he, his his dad was fighting people? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. Good. See, this What's is his name again? Hep. Hep C. Yeah, Hep C. Hep C. Hep C is back, guys. Watch out. Wrap it up. But Mick Cronin is, I feel like this is when he really shines, is when everybody completely doubts him. Yeah. And he's going to be he's gonna be coaching pissed off. But and they got guys that have been there forever. Tiger Campbell and uh, Hawkes have been there forever. This is why uh, this is the group of death. I could see Kansas winning the national championship. I could see UCLA winning the national championship. I could see G- Gonzaga is tough to s- to go all the way, but I could. I can't see them in the final four. I, th- yeah, never I, UConn is up there. Uh, Arkansas and Illinois, like I said, in some like weird twisted timeline, like I could see them. TCU, same thing. Like it, it's the the ones that I the 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 top eight seeds of the top eight seeds of the teams that I think there's no way they're they're winning national championships. Northwestern, and St. Mary's. Jake, I need you but, to put a reminder in here for me because this is something I make a yeah. mistake every single year. If if Arkansas or Illinois wins that game by 10 or more. Okay. Take Kansas by a billion. <laughs> Cuz that is exactly what will happen. Like no. Illinois would beat Arkansas and you'd be like holy That's shit. Thursday game. Illinois so kicked the shit out good, of Arkansas. Yeah. So reminder Kansas would be for better Saturday morning. Yeah, Kansas better watch game. out and then Kansas okay. like no no no. That's not how this works. Does the game if Illinois wins, the game will be in Des Moines, Iowa. Now Kansas is close to there as yes. well obviously, but Illinois very close. Very close to Des Moines. Um, does that matter? How much? How much does that matter Kansas, when you look at? I, I think stuff? Kansas travels better. Yeah, it's yeah. like Kentucky, Kansas, like those teams. They are going to have fans there no matter what. You know what I mean? But but instead of Kansas overwhelmingly having the advantage, yeah, like say if it was Florida Atlantic that they were playing as their nine seed, yeah, it's going to be Illinois. True. I don't know. Either way, what um, do you think? If either of those teams wins decisively in that eight nine matchup, it's hammer time on Kansas. Yeah, because I trick myself. It's it's the same as in football. Whoever wins the wild card, you're like, man, they just won a playoff game. This mm-hmm. other team hasn't won a playoff game yet. <laughs> like, the Giants won a playoff Tim. game. They're going to be able to go into Philadelphia. No, that's mm-hmm. not how it works. Um, all right. I have Roback question. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Wait. Oh, yeah, I'll do it here. Roback question. Uh, you're wearing it right now, Mark. Yep. I'm wearing the Roback joggers. They have Q-zips, hoodies, joggers, polos, everything. Roback.com. The most comfortable clothes in the world. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Uh, who do you have coming out of this region? Group of death. Uh, I have Kansas, it looks like. Okay. Um, and I have Kansas because <laughs> what was the stat I pulled, Jake? Uh, when Bill Self has a one seed, he's gone to seven out of nine Elite Eights. So I think yeah. Kansas is is a shoe in to the Elite Eight. And then at that point, they're going to either play a Gonzaga team that's very flawed um, or a UCLA team that just lost their best defender. And I thought they're probably going to win that game. So I have Kansas going back to the Final Four. That's my pick, Okay. which people hate because anytime you pick the one seed, it makes people very angry. I hate that. Mm. I'm angry. I hate it. I'm angry. angry So wait, what's your Final Four right now? I have, if you want storylines, here's your storyline. I have, in Jim Boeheim's last season in college basketball – I have a 2003 replay with Texas, Kansas, and Marquette all making the Final Four. Ooh. But the fourth team, because Syracuse isn't in it this year, I have Alabama in Syracuse's place, and then Alabama goes on to win the national. They're team. the new Syracuse. They're the new Syracuse. Okay. Yeah. Oh. With a freshman, yeah, leading the way, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, let me ask you this. Has, if, when, in a year that ends in three, has a freshman ever carried a team to a national championship and won their coach his first and only title with Texas, Kansas, and Marquette mm. also in the final four? Has that ever happened? Somebody Google that. I don't mm. I don't think so. <laughs> yes, I'm looking right now. It's What does it say? Yes, it, say yes? it happened. Okay. Actually, okay. it's actually the last year that ended in three. The last time a year ended in three, Syracuse yeah, that's won right. it all. That's right. Because Louisville didn't count. It didn't happen. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so Louisville, yeah. that year did not count. Right. It never happened. Yep. So 20, <laughs> so, 20 years later. No, yeah. So so the last time the year ended in three that we had this. For the record, I when I was filling out my bracket, that was not my train of thought. This is just retroactively making you just stories. Get, it sounds yeah. like you just kind of improv your bracket. You just go through it yeah. pretty without much. writing a structure. But you just lead wherever your heart takes. Yeah, my big my big uh, red flag is that I have a lot of conference tournament winners oh, that's advancing always, far, which is very stupid. Yeah, but recency I, bias. The same thing yeah. that we just yes. said. Yeah, I know. But I I painted myself in a corner. I didn't realize it till I was on my lead eight, and I was like, "Fuck, I did it again." You got to be tired too if you win your conference tournament at this point, right? You would. Yeah, yeah but then UConn. Remember yeah, UConn? Yeah, you can get hot. Kansas won theirs last year. In yeah, the title. yeah. I would, yes, be, I would be tired. Is, yeah. yeah. I would be tired. I'm so tired. So tired. Basketball. I'm tired and I just watch the game. like, fuck this. I have to <laughs> go play basketball again. Yeah. I'm going to take UConn in this region. That's a fun pick. UConn's a fun pick. Too I bad they're going to lose yeah. first round. U yeah. UConn. So my final four is what? UConn, Texas. What was my? Did I've you already Arizona? forgotten. Did you no, go I went Arizona? Memphis. I went Memphis and Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go UCLA. Fuck it. Because fuck it. Because that's why. Keep riding. Because fuck it. It's Mick. It's yeah. Mick. Hepsi in the crowd. Hepsi. The boys. It. Team of destiny. Let's get the boys I actually, back I actually do think there's something to Mick where like the the worse his teams get, the better his coaching gets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd agree. Uh, I'm very... Oh, God damn it. There's nothing better than the tournament. It's the best. Any it's other best. last thoughts? You're going to be um, on the streams with us? Yeah, I'll be streaming. Um, This will be... That'll be fun. Uh, Being in a uh, room full of... Can we get one lock yeah. a day? One Mark Titus lock a day? <laughs> People are very angry that I'm not providing the locks of the day. I've been, I wanted my, uh, I, I told you this, that I wanted my locks of the day to just be like Houston, like find the biggest spread. Yeah. Do I'll it. do that. I'll yeah. do money line. I'll do one over 16 money line. As just my roll it over. It'd be so awesome <laughs> if yeah. you lost. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 512. Give us a 512 upset. Uh, 512. So it would have been Oral Roberts over Duke, but I think Duke's, the, I think Duke's the best five and Oral Roberts is the best 12. So I will say Charleston over San Diego State. I think San Diego mm. State, um, I think San Diego State's the better team. But Charleston, like, has like all year they're, they're not that great, but they just keep finding ways to win, and the game will be close, and they'll eke out a W, and uh, that feels like a good one. But I like all the, I honestly like all the twelve fives as everybody does every year. But this is the the little nugget I guess is I was I was talking to Jake about is that. Uh, this year it felt like there were a ton of the in the conference the small school conference tournaments. The one seeds and the two seeds won a lot of them to where your 12 through 16 seeds are very, very strong. There's not a lot of teams that got hot just to win three games in their conference tournament. And yes. now they're like a 14 yeah. seed that might be a little fraudulent. These are teams that were dominating their conferences all year, like across the board. Um, so, yeah, it, it, there probably will be a lot of upsets because it's a lot of 25 plus win teams yeah. that are. Double digit seeds. Would you which say doesn't happen all the time? What what fifteen seed is the most likely to give a two seed a scare? I would say There's always a scare out there. Princeton, Colgate, or Asheville would probably be the three so I would three look at, but not. But okay. the I don't you know, know if there's narrow it down a little bit to maybe two out of four. Just three no, out like of four. Three. I don't like the. So wait, what's the one yeah. that is not going to give a scare? It's Vermont. Be, yeah, that's, Vermont. That's, that's Ver the point. Oh, oh Vermont. Oh, okay, oh, gotcha. I didn't yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to. They're gonna win. So Jake creamed. That's his, not a scare. What did you say? Creamed his Dockers. He creamed his Dockers when they announced that in Columbus, and he asked for permission to go. It's like yes. The I, I uh I Jake's Jake's very persuasive, so uh he's he's slowly talking me into the idea. For, but Vermont and Colgate were two teams I wrote down. Don't trust them. They like how how often can, can we just one time I want Vermont to pop up on a bracket and nobody mentioned T.J. Sorrentine. Yeah, name. no. But unfortunately, no. we have no other moments to go off of. Yeah. And at what point do we all say, wait a second? We talk about this every year. Nothing happens. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but Which it is, is why it's, it's going to happen now when no one suspects <laughs> it. Yeah. Gonzaga. It's it's you're taking them because no one expects them to go if, deep. If yeah. if That's Vermont like, does beat Marquette, Jake deserves to just like host part of my take one day or something. No, like he, gets, no, 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 no. he should host your podcast for a day. No, 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 no. I, I probably would let you do no. that. Yeah. 
He doesn't even want that. He the just Jake over. What? Jake, if Vermont <laughs> beats Jake, Jake over, yeah. if Vermont beats Marquette, uh, you get to do the Ray Allen tweet. Uh, perfect. That's perfect. Let's go, Golden yeah, Eagles. Yeah, yeah, let's go. That's perfect. <laughs> Wait, you would rather have Marquette win <laughs> Jesus than to, like, than kidding. to have like, like an all time upset <laughs> and have to tweet the Ray Allen tweet? I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Right. We should we should actually pick one where if you call the upset correctly, you get to do the Ray Allen tweet. Okay, like how Max has got to be to do a that? thirteen or higher. Thirteen or higher. All right, Titus, you in? Yeah. What you could do the Ray Allen tweet? Oh well, I'm clearly gonna go Iona. Yeah, if I own a win, if you, I own a win, do the Ray Allen. I'm going to do the Ray Allen tweet. I don't think I want to do the Ray Allen. Tweet. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to. <laughs> Welcome um, to the club. I, need, I, don't I needed it's some help. Honor. Unfortunately, yeah. you still have some integrity. Well, you Quite could nice. just pick a 16 seed. That's true. I'll pick. Uh, no, this might, happens, no. it might happen. It might happen, Titus. Look at <laughs> do no. it. I'll pick fairly Dickinson because okay. it has. Oh yeah, see yeah, your line. See your line. That you oh, that's that. That Dickinson did make like, at least one Dickinson made the NCAA tournament. Yeah, oh, that's good. Pretty that's awesome. good. Yeah, that's like pretty that's good too. Because Taylor Dickinson has to win two games. Yeah, they have to win two. So and smart. Dickinson, I don't know. I would love it if, if Hunter Dickinson well, showed up with the, the ski mask on for the NIT. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Michigan has Toledo in the NIT, by the way. Our oh, guys, Barcelona, ooh. Barcelona right. Invitational. I'll go Furman. I'll go Furman with my uh, Ray Allen tweet pick. I feel right. good about that. If Furman we, wins. We, PFD and I want to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would pop. I would love lines. it. I would yeah. love nothing yeah. more than to yeah. do it. <laughs> but it's good that we're doing this type of stuff where we can't, because it would lose its luster if we just did it. Yep. Yeah. I'm excited to watch the tournament with you boys, though. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, 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 it'll be fun to it's be on the grind. couch with you guys it's and grind. And, you yeah. say, you say that now. By the end of day number two, you're going to be just uh, tapping out. It's I'm, I'm curious. I've I've done four, three, maybe four, uh, West Coast NCAA tournaments. A tip off at 9 a.m. Yeah. You wake up, make a little coffee, and then the games are starting. So I'm curious to get back on the East Coast. And yeah, see, just uh, blend, it all blends it all, together. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you really don't have a morning, the and then you just. Recording podcasts at 2 a.m. Hey, the night after some games, of us. You know? Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. That's we'll us. See, we'll see where that goes. Um, we get a little loopy. All right, you want to stick around for the lottery ball? Yeah. yeah okay, all right. Cool. Uh, one last thing we got to get to. I've talked about this all episode. Uh, PFT. Yeah, Big Cat. I think I've sold it, but I want you to say right now that you're going to be a pepperoni dog owner and get your future dog pepperoni treats all the time. Like Whitey, who's in studio right now. Give him a pepperoni treat. Yeah, but I want to see if Whitey likes it before I make my final decision. Make sure you're on the YouTube to see Whitey in all his glory getting some pepperoni treats. I mean, Whitey's, awesome. Whitey's going nuts. Whitey's Hell in yes. here right now. Look at this. And Billy's dog's yeah. also here. Clip clip this and send it to me, Max, because this is, oh, a, a this is the boy. best ad ever. I'll tell you what. Uh, Whitey is locked in on those treats right now. Look I'm ready to say it. I'm a pepperoni guy. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Everyone clap it up for PFT. He's the, the a future, pepperoni guy. future PFT puppy is going to be loaded, yes. loaded with pepperoni. And pepperoni is uh, our wonderful sponsor. Pepperoni has a taste and aroma that dogs find irresistible. Look at Whitey right now. He's barking Proof at tested you. right now. Give me more. He's going woof yeah with his pepperoni beef flavor snacks. So be your best friend's best friend with pepperoni treats. Go to pepperoni dot com to find a bag near you you also send us a pic of you and your dog filling out your bracket for a chance to win some pmt merch tweet us at pardon my take and at pepperoni i'll tweet out a picture me and stella filling out our bracket uh go check it out now uh billy let's go uh an extra mile for pepperoni i want whitey's bracket so i want you i want him to pick every single game mm -hmm. already done. oh okay you've done it already <laughs> you actually did we sat here and did it you did the whole bracket. Yep. Look at that. Good that's job, beautiful. Billy. All right, so Billy. Why does why that's does, why well, that's why he's farting. Why does his collar say six four six three two? Okay, so oh, <laughs> that, oh that's your number. <laughs> <laughs> Go to pepperoni .com to find a bag near you. Set some some psycho is going to spend the next like four days trying to figure <laughs> out hack Billy's number. Uh, send us a pic of your dog filling out your bracket for a chance to win some PMT merch. Tweet us at part of my take and at pepperoni. Thank you to pepperoni. Go get some pepperoni for your dogs. Come on. They love it. Look, Whitey's going absolutely bonkers right now for his pepperoni. Okay. It's time. Titus, your first ever chance. Uh, Hank, have you ever gotten this? Nope. You sure? Yep. Positive. You've never gotten the lottery ball? No. 
This is his first time, so he doesn't know. How many sh- You guys have much. done a lot of shows, have you? Yeah. Hank, you want to do a pee back? This is our 500 show, actually. And you've never gotten it one time? No. You want to wow. do a pee back? I don't have any pee. The water's off. I don't have any right now. Okay. All right. We won't do it. Uh, should we let Titus pick first? Just out of, He's our guest. I'll, I'll go 83. 83. Okay. Numbers. 69. 69. Oh, that was you. PFT. 88. PFT, he beat you. I beat 20. you. I literally beat you. 17. Oh, Murph. What's your number, Billy? 96. Okay. 18. 18. What was you? 83. I was 83. Hank yeah. is 88. 20, 96, 69, 17. High percentage. A lot of people guessing right now. Eight. Eight. So are you going to guess eight? I guess 88. Oh, no, <laughs> Hank. You were so close. You're only 80 numbers off. <laughs> were you thinking about guessing eight? No. Yeah, you. I mean, you don't guess 88 without thinking about eight. Is that It's a lot of fiction? eights. You wanted more eights. Fact, fact you got fiction. greedy, fiction. Hank. You got you, greedy. You do half the amount of eights and you would have won. <laughs> Everything would have been different. PFC, you won on eight twice. Yeah, eight's my jam. And Hank's never won. I would have taken eight, but I, I took 69 for Billy. Ever. All right, that's the show. Love you guys. Birds are closer to dinosaurs than lizards. Wait, are dinosaurs real? Are they methodical? Methodically.